Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm extra loud to make sure Harry's nice and awake with us today. We're here, we're live, and probably too loud. We've exploded some headphones uh, for the So Rare Deadline Show for Game Week 467. I am Quinny, of course, and I am joined as ever by my co-pilot, Harry Trades, my man. Good to see you. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, always good to get back with you, even though it's an early morning for me. Um, yeah, it's worth it. Fully worth it because, yeah, we've got a massive, massive weekend, haven't we? Huge. That's it. It is huge. And I was listening to you and Laird on Soria Data previewing the game week, and we can see uh, in that show, it is wide open. There's a lot of good champion, challenger, contender situations. And also we've got all these legacy competitions to, to fail in with as well. We had some pitch notes come out this morning, I want to mm -hmm. say, um, which I've I've got the I've got the lowdown from from group chats and all the rest of it. But I've not actually uh, opened myself. Have you had a, a glance yet, Harry? I did, mate. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can remember was we can basically have multi-entry and all-star for the midweeks. Or is that only two entries? I don't know whether there's three. I, I definitely know it's two. I just can't remember if we can do more than two. Yeah, so starting to, uh, the game week, which will be next midweek, all-star team entries will be allowed for the rest of the transition phase for midweeks only. Uh I don't know if I actually says the number here, just says plus. Yeah, it says, oh, two, two. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. iOS app managers can now view other managers' lineups directly from the leaderboards, which maybe is a new thing. Interface issue preventing teams from updating has been fixed. Oh, that's good. And on a team's page, you can now see its progression history yeah. across divisions. Nice. That's fun. I found that last night, actually. I sent a little screenshot into Laird. I said, this is new, right? And he was like, yeah, it must be. But yeah, it's on the bottom right, basically. If you go on a team, like any of your teams, um there's a little yeah sort of table that says yeah you got promoted last week demoted the week before blah 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 it's pretty cool yeah that is cool because i was noticing with my double relegation last week that and with some of the promotions and whatever i might have like my second team overtake my first team like that could happen <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. Yeah. um which is just a bit of a giggle obviously but you know, so that's quite, that's kind of cool. You can see, oh, this was my bottom division team. And now it's actually <laughs> my top <laughs> entry. It's rose through the ranks and, and all the rest of it. Tons of fist bumps on arrival. Sorry, our scouts and managers all over the world tuning in. Now, guys, as soon as we finish the deadline show today, sit tight, stay comfy. We've got the premiere booked, locked and loaded and ready to go for the Sorry, our sevens live podcast we did uh, on Sunday. So that will be live premiering as it is on YouTube uh, right after the deadline show today with me and Harry. So, if you're after some of that good stuff and the deadline show isn't quite enough for you, then there's a little bit of uh, extra bonus Friday action here on the channel. So uh, it should be a good one. We've got a bunch of these here. Obviously, we've got the poll up and going, and it is resoundingly 90% of people are liking on arrival because they know they want their RNG lock locked in because these boxes are pretty unforgiving. I'm watching box openings, Harry, every Tuesday and Friday night now from yourself and the good and the great the story our youtube community and you know when you get those wee cheeky see hey we're getting a unique you see you with a ruben diaz i've seen uh jack get a christopher Iyer, who can do anything mm -hmm. obviously and a few, it gives you that wee bit of oh i need to get some boxes but as we can see for the people that don't come to the show and like the stream they're just getting level ups and power ups and you know we can see that you know we see who shows up in the live chat we see who drops their fist bumps gets their likes on arrival and it's no surprise that those people all get cards in their boxes and the people they only get power-ups. We never see them at the deadline show. So it's not much of a surprise. Let's just be straight about right. it, you know. So um, get your RNG lock rock, locked in. We don't want any of those DNPs. We want those boxes pumping out cards left, right, and centre. A lot of living legends in the chat here as well. Harry boy. Do we have any Mr. Midweek? Have you been cooking and firing? Um, no, mate, to be honest. No, I had an absolute stinker with just DNPs, like landmines and all sorts going on. Um I was actually my, my game week still hadn't finished up until literally a couple of minutes ago with uh the J League early morning stuff, um, which you know resulted in a disaster as well. But no, nah, mate, honestly, I had like some incredible scores and then like like Zaya Emery predicted to probably play and doesn't. Caceres doesn't even get off the bench. Don't ask me why I've Captain Bazunu. I've had a shocker, lads. Don't I just don't, <laughs> need, to go don't need to go into it. Um the Dundee game gets postponed again this was the lineup that you know was live up until a couple of minutes ago but yeah they, they ended up conceding of course they did um this is the most annoying one i almost got a box i was 33 points away from the box uh diaz on the bench bruno fuch um yeah just not in the squad he just got fluid on the thigh who, who gets a you know f fluid on the thigh double decisive from ruben diaz but not the double decisive we won 
The OG was pretty harsh, awarded, wasn't it? That's a Camavinga goal, if ever I've seen it, you know. Camavinga's like first ever goal, like give it to him. And then the striker that I probably should have played in the top lineup scores and is my captain in the second lineup. Diego Gomez gets a double decisive, not the one we want. It was just like, just a weird week, mate, to be honest. Really, really weird. These are all academy lineups. Obviously, Sadosla had a, had a mare. Um, yeah, mate, just a really, I mean, look, I didn't like go out and buy anything for this midweek. It was one of them where, you know, I just played with what I had um and yeah I, like it is what it is right like i haven't lost anything in that sense um and midweeks right now don't feel the same do they and i don't think that they, they ever will in the you know it's just not going to be as fruitful for the most part they, they're still you know quote unquote fun but i don't think you know they're just not going to be the same for someone like me who really tried in the midweek you know that's just not going to be the way i'm going to go about things i'm going to still play them but they're not going to be my bread and butter you know of course. I think this time of the season as well, midweeks do get tougher anyway because there's just less teams involved right. and, you know, that kind of thing. So those two things are probably playing each off each other in quite a difficult mm -hmm. way. So the extra yeah. entry into All-Star might be fun. If anyone cares, this was my midweek. Yeah. Done absolutely nothing very quickly. So there it is, <laughs> if anyone cares. But there'll be no boxes at FC Barcelona this Friday night, eh, sadly for us, and no freshies or anything else to, mm -hmm. to, to write home about, sadly. But Harry Boy, this weekend is an absolute mammoth game week because it does feel like over the last few deadline shows we've seen the chat people talking about oh i might play in d3 or i might go in my strongest divisions yada yada everyone's kind of changing week to week what their strategy is you know for for better and for worse depending on their cards and how we see divisions setting up but i feel more than ever over this week speaking to story managers that not many people have much uh, doubt or there's not that much ambiguity going around like oh what does it mean to play in this division we can see enough kind of you know three weeks of historical scores you get a bit of an idea of what's going on so it feels like a lot of Surya scouts and managers are a bit more laser focused you know down the down the eye of the barrel on what they're aiming for this week how do you feel this weekend com compared to maybe the last two um i mean yeah we, we've obviously learned a bit more haven't we? we've had a couple of weeks of it um we've learned that yeah you know the the pain of having a dmp now in a lineup like i, I think i experienced last weekend in i think it was like a, a super rare challenger i think it was my d1 super rare challenger classic and i had a dmp matson didn't play right so I, it was on a good score it wouldn't have won anything it, it might have won a box actually to be fair because matson was my captain to play he doesn't play that that lineup gets relegated you know and it's like it's a it's a double whammy these days it's like dmp and i've seen sean speak about it, but it is like double whammy DMP equals relegation basically now. And it's like, it's tough because then this role on this weekend where I've fallen into some incredible challenger fixtures, I'm not in D1. And it's just like, I'm not saying I'd, I'd go out and smash D1 anyway, but the fact that I can't even try because I've obviously got relegated elsewhere. I get it. Like, I know, and I, I know you've experienced that, you know, this weekend or this past weekend, sorry, with, with the big game with, with Celtic and then going into this weekend, they have a home fixture. I think before on So Red, one week to the next didn't, matter if they, you know they were completely mutually exclusive but now with the whole relegation and promotion aspect it does really like they're, they're intertwined fully you know what i'm saying like what happens one week will now have a massive knock-on effect in your ability to win um prizes at the higher levels you know in that sense like if you've got relegated you just can't play in d1 or whatever like those things are now a thing where before they weren't. So I think it adds a wicked element. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining that it's happened. I'm, I'm gutted that it's happened, but I'm not here saying like we shouldn't have it. I think it's great. I think it adds another layer of gamification to this game, which was needed. I think it was stale. We all know it was quite stale from, from many aspects, you know, and it's, there's still room to grow, but no, I, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've had to, I've had to move, like I said, with the, the Mr. Midweek stuff, I've, I've definitely had to pivot in some ways, um, but I'm enjoying it more. Honestly, man, I've never enjoyed it more the last couple of weeks, genuinely. Like before, I used to not dread the weekends, but it felt like it was one of them where it was all about the threshold, wasn't it? It was like, let's hit the threshold. We have to hit the threshold. Otherwise, it's, just, it's, it's you know not, not a good game week or whatever. But now, because there's so many different ways that you can win, whether that be boxes, whether that be cards, whether that be cash in multiple different, um, you know, in-season comps, like it just feels like we have a balanced game right now, Quinny. And I, since we, maybe we've been playing it for, so, for years now, like... That genuinely, look, it actually feels like a proper game now. Um, and there's still miles, you know, things that they can do. But, like, this is the first time I've felt, like, 
at ease with the game, if that makes any sense. Even though, it, you know, you could argue it's probably got harder in some ways if you want to still compete for those big prizes. You know, there's less, there's less ways of, you know, like there's, there's less Mr. Midweek type of edges to be had, isn't it? And, it, you know, there, there will be other ones that come out. And, you know, as we get, you know, further along into this, you know, new new era, there is definitely going to be people who, you know, find edges and whatever, and that's great. But um, no, I, I feel happy with it. Like, I, I'm happy with where I'm at. I've got, I've gone from having like a couple of teams over a weekend and if one goes down, I'm like two left and I'm like sweating. Now I've like, you know, I've got like 15 teams out. There's just so many more places now that, yeah, could go wrong, but also more places that could go right. So that's, that's where I'm at. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just buzzing for the weekend. I really, really am. Should be a big one. Lots of difficult decisions to be made. And we start off with the matchups, Tim Abaz pair. And in Champion Europe, this is the good and the great here. I think that top 10 is a real firm batch of, you know, solid champ cards. Certainly teams that are kind of well stacked. I've got some interesting players in them. And they're all at home, <laughs> you know, for the most yeah. part, you know. So uh, champ is definitely where I think all eyes begin for this game week, isn't it? Is Especially if you have the cards, you know, where do I play them? Is it Prem? Is it Champ? In-season classic? All-star? These kind of things. Man City at home to Luton, right at the tippy top there. Having played Champions League midweek, Pep Roulette always been uh, on the cards. Is that the top fixture? I mean, it is. But like you said, as far as rotation goes, you know, there is definitely doubt in certain areas. But then, you know, the players coming in, Quinny, there's not much difference, is there, as far as quality goes. And if anything, you could see those players, you know, scoring even better, your Alvarez, your, your Dokus and whatever. So, uh, yeah, I, I would have to say it has to be, right? Luton at home? Surely. Yeah, you think so. Uh, obviously, Inter Milan catch the eye. They've been dominant, dominant, dominant this season. Mm -hmm. So, I hope at Cagliari, uh, Claudio Ranieri's men. Maybe there's a wee banana skin there with Ranieri in the dugout, but it should be another one or two now, quite convincing win for Inter, you'd think. But Leverkusen are the one I think will make or break so many SO5 lineups because they played Thursday night. They won 2 0 against West Ham. They're playing this game on Sunday, and this mm -hmm. will be a home game. If they win, they seal the title. Job done, wow. you know. So, mm -hmm. Uh, do like Xabi Alonso has been very famous this season for that midweek to weekend rotation. You know, if guys like Wurtz, Frimplong, feels like everyone essentially but Grimaldo is kind of rotation uh, bait. So that right. Leverkusen one for the people that like to stack them. Boniface is back in town as well. So mm -hmm. there's a few, you know, Leverkusen. Again, I think Leverkusen and Man City for me are a wee bit uh, red herrings just because you don't really know. Like De Bruyne's here at 70% on to play, but does De Bruyne get 90 minutes? And if he doesn't, you know, as a result, how big does his score get? Um, and again, care. looking at like Leverkusen, if Wurtz doesn't start, Hoffman's back fit now. So maybe it's like Adley and Hoffman in support of Schicker Boniface, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't feel like these bigger teams, their stacks go together that cleanly. Liverpool midweek, Bayern had the midweek. Bayern season's mm -hmm. done. They need Champions League football. They're playing Arsenal, who played Aston Villa last night. So, like, right. I just feel that, what was that, top six? Hard, hard, hard to pick the teams. Yeah, I, I, I would I would agree with you. I, I do think though on the the Man City Leverkusen like rotational debate, I, in a weird way, I'd actually I think I'd have a better chance of picking the City team this week weekend. Ooh. Sorry, I do think I would. Yeah, genuinely, because you know you know John Stones is probably not going to play two games in four days. Like there's yep. certain things that you can kind of work out. Yeah, okay, the De Bruyne one was sick in the midweek. There's no way he doesn't play this game. But like you said, does he get 90? Does he need 90? Probably not. Let's be honest. Like, does any of those players there need 90, po uh, 90 minutes to score 80 points plus? I'm going to argue no. Haaland needs the goals. Like, there's just things that you can work out. I think they're a lot more cleaner. Um, with Leverkusen, you know, I don't follow them. Like, I'm not a dedicated Leverkusen fan in that, you know, I have any players from them right now. So, it, it, it's I, I'd have trouble, you know, Picking their team, but off you know what happened last night. You know, Hoffman came off the bench, two two decisives for him. Boniface got a goal. Um, I think Palacios played yesterday, so th there's like one in every position there that could change. I know the back four or back three or whatever looks quite um, settled, but we know we know we can mix things up. But that front seven, like you said, Bar Grimaldo, but maybe even Grimaldo. Like I just don't like the look of that. I mean, Hoffman, no, you know, knowing the Hoffman came off the bench and did well yesterday. I'd be shocked if he doesn't start, but the rest are literally coin tosses. Uh, yeah, coin tosses. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I always get that one wrong. Yeah, that's a proper tongue twister. <laughs> Does me in, but yeah, I don't know. I'd honestly think I'd have a better chance picking the city team. Yeah, not fair. fair Even fair though they can win the league, like 
Yeah, I think that it doesn't matter what Leverkusen really put out. I think they walk over Werder Bremen, don't they? Sure. Yeah. I think so too. They're going to defend and look to counter-attack. Interesting little note, this goalkeeper has been linked to Celtic, would you believe, uh, in the last week? Oh, Zetterer? Wow. No, I'm, I'm holding my, my breath over that, getting too excited. Um, mm-hmm. We've put the predicted teams on screen for the three, three, uh, two of the three teams we've mentioned. I'll put in our on screen now for anyone who's after it. Uh, it's there on screen for you now. They're at home at Cagliari. And yeah, I think these will probably be the three power plays. Like like you say with the Man City, yeah, maybe De Bruyne doesn't need... 80 minutes to, to bring in a, a 90 score or whatever, but we know Rodri in the starting line up there, and like you say, a few more of the mm. other kind of pieces maybe rotating around. It's about catching the decisives, and you know, it's just yeah, it's so it's maybe just a little bit less formidable than what it has been in recent weeks. But on you go, no, I was just gonna say it's, it's nice not it's nice knowing that Rodri probably doesn't play this weekend, <laughs> yeah, for us that don't have him, for sure. yeah, like that's a hundred game, like as simple as it, it just is, I think, at home to Luton. Maybe decisive less as well, it, you know, he, with with how he plays it, he always seems to pop up with something as well. So like, yeah, knowing that you probably don't have to worry about him or even if you do, most people probably haven't played him because he is a rotational risk um, big time with, you know, coming out and saying he probably needs a rest and whatever. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a funny one, but I do think we're going to see, we are just going to see massive scores from those teams regardless. It's just, yeah, getting them right, isn't it? Who, who's managed to, to luck out on the on the picks? Yeah, because I think like yeah, between those three teams, you could probably get a good SO five lineup out. But most people tend to have their collection tied to a few clubs or whatever. But uh, we, we won't chat Bayern just yet because Liverpool make this top five as well. They're home at Crystal Palace, and Jurgen Klopp had his egg had egg on his face last night, getting absolutely schooled by Atalanta doing what Atalanta do best, and that's attacking football. It is all eyes on the Premier League now for Liverpool for Jurgen Klopp's kind of. Final hurrah. They've already won the League Cup, of course, so they, it won't end trophy list, but you've got to think at home at Palace, that's a game that they're going to be going for. And as Soraya scouts and managers from all around the world will know, Soraya and Liverpool have got a bit of a special connection, a little bit of a special bond. And last year, Harry Boy, me and you had the privilege, the joy, the honour of playing on Anfield with Soraya, with a lot of other people, which was great. And this year, they've said very clearly, Harry, it's a once in a lifetime experience, so we're not invited back. They don't want us back, that we're not allowed. They've been very subtle with it. But we're not coming back. It's not happening. And uh, we've got a little post out here to promote it for Soraya itself. And guys, I'm going to be giving away a card, okay, today in the stream. And I want you to interact with this post. I want likes, retweets. And if you like me and Harry Boy, you like Soraya, can you put a wee response in there, a wee comment of any sort? Just show us a wee bit of love. Show us a wee bit of... Yeah, a wee bit of engagement would be much appreciated. And I'll be giving away a wee cheeky in-season Premier League Limited. If some of you guys are quite keen observers of the gallery, we'll know. I don't actually have that many of them. So it'll be none other than, as soon as I get the screen to load, Destiny Udoggy will be giving this away to someone in the show today before the deadline. So you can get this guy locked into your lineups or whatever. All you need to do is find that Twitter post at Quinny3001, like, retweet. And if you do like the show, you do like us, leave a wee comment as well and just so show some support. It just would be appreciated. Anyone who likes and retweets it will be entered into the draw. And before the show is finished today, we'll be giving away a 3D Destiny Udoggy in-season Premier League card for someone to use this game week or do whatever they please with it because it will be theirs, of course. So last chance, I'll show you again this one. Last chance. Like, retweet, get involved in the comment section, and we'll pull that out before the deadline so someone can get that card into their gallery. But the Liverpool lineup coming into this game doesn't actually look that rotated or that weak, considering they played Thursday night, and then this game is on, I want to say Sunday. It's not Monday, is it? Uh, no, yeah, Sunday, 14th. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, last night's result was obviously shocking, and yeah, it was, you know, they, they brought on a few players at half time. you know, it clearly still didn't work, and yeah, so both sides came on and had a bit of a stinker uh, from what I saw. Uh, Salah had a goal disallowed. Like, you know, they, they sort of huffed and puffed, but it just obviously wasn't meant to be. And um, yeah, you know, the big boys are back in. Robbo starting, Diaz, Salah. You know, I, yeah, they, there's big pressure on them right now, isn't there, to, to get a result here um, after what happened last night. And then, you know, looking forward to next midweek, they, you know, they've, they've got so much work to do, you know, in Italy. It, it probably is over, really, but you never know with Liverpool, right? But like, yeah, this is um, this is a massive one. But yeah, there's like you know, I've I've got a subo slide myself. It's a weird one looking at that and thinking, you know, is he is he going to start? Like he, he came on yesterday, didn't really do much. Nobody really did much. But like, you know, there is definitely little things that you know might change. You know, personnel wise, Gakpo looked good yesterday from what I've seen and heard. So like, 
you just never know, right? So, yeah, you know, the main one, Gisela's Van Dyke, you can probably get away with, right? McAllister's, but there's definitely a few fringe ones there that, you know, are are risky. You know, the, the, the percentages tell, tell you that. Yeah. The thing I like about, like, the Van Dyke, Robbo, Salah, a lot of these guys, like, through Liverpool's heyday under Klopp, these guys play midweek, weekend, mm -hmm. no problem at all. So I think there is a good core here in Liverpool you can you can formulate your team around. And then, yeah, do you take the risk on Soba slide? Do you think Diaz will have his day in the sun? But uh, at Anfield, it is a, it's a special, it's hollowed ground, Harry boy. And we know that, you know, the fans turn up in a big way. And at home at Palace, who... Palace, who look kind of defensive when you look at this on, on the grand scheme of things, this will be a great game for Liverpool because Palace will leave the spaces that Liverpool want to run into and Liverpool are probably going to leave the spaces that Palace want to run into. So I'm not too sure how I feel about a clean sheet for the Liverpool boys, but it's going to be high AA potential, I think, and then you're just looking to catch some decisives where they land. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, I think it'll be high scoring, really high scoring. But like you said, that they keep the clean sheet and like Dave says in the chat, they're worried about who plays in goal. I mean, Kelleher probably should do better for that first goal last night, kind of went under him. Um, and yeah, you just don't know. I, I don't know if, is Alisson fit? Uh, I, I'm guessing he is if he's 40%, you know, on on Harper, but I, I don't know how fit he is really. Like, do they want to rush him? I, I'm not really too sure. Uh, no sign of Maeda again. Once in a lifetime, unless you're nervous. I think John will be back. So I think it's maybe more than once in a lifetime for John, perhaps. But maybe he's taking someone else because uh, that's what he did last time, wasn't it? Uh, that guy was funny, wasn't he? Also, when you were there, we kind of seen it behind the camera, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> that guy was a uh, guy did not know what he signed up for, did he? <laughs> yeah, he's a rabbit in a headlights, wasn't he? Yeah. What do you think about this before we move on, real quickly? Uh, Jeremy, with a great point. If Leverkusen win the title this game week, would we classify their title campaign as invincible, even if they don't finish the season ultimately undefeated? Well, have they lost a game? No, they're on zero losses. Let's say they win at the weekend, yeah. they're on zero losses. Yeah. They're invincible at point of winning title. But then let's yeah. say between now and end of the season, they lost two matches or one match. Would you well, no. call them invincible or undefeated? Or No, I mean, because they'd be defeated. Like, as long as they you know do lose, then yeah, you'd have to say they're defeated, right? Yeah. Surely. But Klopp's empty back in training. Alison says. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, if Kelleher did make that mistake last night, then probably we don't have to worry about it. Or, but maybe we do now. I don't know. Yeah, we've got the Bayern team up here as well. They're the other team in the top five for uh, champions. This team was updated only an hour or two ago, so this will be pretty fresh from the, the press conferences, which is all good. Kimmich, 50-50 to get back into midfield here with Mazrawi maybe sneaking back into right back. So TBC on that because uh, Goretzka has been ruling that Bayern midfield in <laughs> Kimmich's absence, which has been great. <laughs> Neuer at 80% does surprise me, but because I did, uh, I don't know why, but coming into this weekend, I thought that Ulrich might have been kind of, it, it might have had a good shot to play, but it seems with the press conference we've maybe had earlier today, that's maybe all but ruled out um, and Neuer should be in town. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Coleman back in the picture, no Sani, no Nabry, Muller Kane in attack, Hope Cologne. Like I know they can't win the league or anything like that, but imagine they finished third behind Stuttgart. That's what's maybe on the cards now for Bayern. So um even though their focus is on the Champions League, they don't take this game lightly, do they? No, no chance. No chance. They'll definitely they, they won't want to get disrespected, you know, in, the, in their own sort of league, <laughs> um, as it were over the last few years and stuff. So yeah, no, I, I think they'll definitely try and Put on some sort of display um, for the home fans, and yeah, obviously big game than that midweek. But yeah, I, I can't see them, you know, taking it lightly at all. Let's have a wee peek at Stuttgart real quick. So I don't think they're going to make the matchup tab. But where are they playing, and who are they playing? Oh, they're playing Frankfurt. So that'll be a tough game. Top uh, top half, t full strength for the boys. It looks like maybe the right backs different. I don't know any of these names, but Nubel just signed a contract extension at Bayern. I don't know if you've seen that this morning. I did see that, yeah. They're waxing lyrical about him. He's going to stay at Stuttgart for I don't know how long. I didn't read the, the whole thing, but um, so maybe a wee bit of security on the whole Nubel. I don't know why he's only 55% here, but maybe they think he won't be back from Munich signing his contract extension in time. <laughs> or, or Carrying his money bags like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Getting his bags to the airport. Now, I actually think, Harry, this might be the best champion Euro fixture of the weekend and it is Lazio. Igor Tudor's Lazio at home to bottom of the table. Salernitana. Now I want to check out Serie A as well, see what the standings are like, but Lazio definitely don't have their destiny in their own hands. They're not cruising in top four. They're not fighting for the title or anything like that. 
still a lot of points to be won. And uh, under Sarri, Lazio were not really a good SO5 team. Maybe Luis Alberto, maybe a Mobile, maybe a random fullback might do something. But uh, two-door football is very front foot, very attacking, very decisive, heavy. And seeing that they're going to play Gustav Isaacson twice in attack just shows how much work effort that Tudor is expected from his front line here, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they, they must have du <laughs> duplication glitch in, uh, in Italy, right? Because have got two cards. That's what Lazio have done. They've got two cards in his and haven't oh, they? Play right, they're playing the mid and the forward card, right? That makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the big so, yeah. tatty. It's, yeah, it's a, an a Isaksen tatty sandwich. Um, is. But yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's a great matchup. I... Yeah, there's a few, you know, there's a few sort of ex SO5 players there, and you know, Kamadas and Luis Alberto. Like, there's some big, you know, big players there, you know, historically. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the fl fixture. If, if, if there's going to be a 80, 90 hundreds in, in games for Lazio players, it's probably this. But, you know, looking at those L5s and 15s, it could be some big, you know, 240s and 270s, 220s pop off in some way if you can kind of call it right. Um, but yeah, they're struggling, aren't they? Salernitana team that's on screen for you now, in case you wanted to see it. And we'll check the standards real quickly. Lazio currently on 46 points, 31 games played, one game less than Atalanta, who occupy the final European spot. And they're four points behind them, so it's not unassailable at this stage, you know, but they can't, they need to win every game, don't they, uh, to keep that pressure on and maybe pull a miracle out the bag. So yeah, I actually fancy Lazio to score four or five goals in a game like this, to be honest with you, especially with the way they're going to play. Isaacson wants to make a name for himself, so does Tati. Luis Alberto will be looking to get his name in this spot, and Kamada's had a bit of an absent season, so I can see a lot of motivation in this team to go on and kick on. Uh, Felipe Anderson, who's kind of in and out of this team here, he signed a pre-contract with Juventus, so I think this, um, I think we'll see if he's been bobbed out of the squad this weekend or not, because if he doesn't start, you know, and it's Lazari on right, Isaacson in that Felipe Anderson spot, then mm -hmm. two doors maybe just saying, right, pack your bags, wee man, I'm done with you, so one to yep. watch out for for the Felipe Anderson holders, but it is tatty season for sure. I'm buzzing for it. L15 of 34. Eat your heart out. Tasty. It's tasty. It is. Um, and then there's another game, Harry. There's another yeah. game, Harry. That's a, you know maybe one of those weeks. You never know. But Might we've be got and Tony week. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I don't think <laughs> will be on. I don't think he's on to start this one. No. <laughs> Sadly not, but it's Zachariah time, I think. Kubo's 50-50 for this one, so we need to see. I was actually waiting on uh, Sociedad training pictures today. They didn't train yesterday um, because the game is on Sunday, so I think they gave him a day off yesterday. But Baranashea back in town on the left flank, Oyarazabal, the penalty-taking striker, L15 of 41, starting through the centre there, so that's a bit of spice for sure. Zachariah coming into the Braze Mendes role, which you love to see. And I've got both the full-backs here, Hamari and Galan. I expect him to be bombing on as well. But uh, home to Almeria. Almeria, let's spend money. They've got not a bad squad. Jonathan Vieira, some of you guys might remember him. Robert Tony, he's a bit of a player. Maximiano in goals. Definitely not pushovers. And they've signed players already for next season, Almeria. You know, they're quite an active club in that regard. But Sociedad, after finishing in the Champions League spots last season, this year in the league, it's not quite worked out. Copa del Rey semi-final, no cup final for them. And obviously getting eliminated off a of PSG in the first knockout round of the Champions League. So they'll be looking above them and seeing athletic clubs, their rival, seven points ahead of them for what might be a Champions League position in fifth. We're still waiting to see how some of the coefficients shake out. But yeah, like they don't want to be caught by Valencia. They don't want to be caught by Real Betis, certainly, who are just behind them. So uh, Real Sociedad cannot afford to drop any more points. And, you know, we've not seen Baron Ashea in a lineup for ages. Kubo's been in and out of the squad. I think this could be... A good home fixture for the Sociedad lads, for sure. Yeah, it does look pretty tasty. Or he has a couple of decisives there for him. If he's the main man down the middle, quite a bit of pace on the left and right around him. So, yeah, he could, could get a bit of service there, couldn't he? As long as he's, yeah, on it. But yeah, lovely L15 on him as well. Yeah. Yeah, L15 is for Zaki, 41 is, is lovely. And uh, and Baranashea and Oyer Azabal and them, Galan. Yeah. Like, that's, that's my team. <laughs> that's, that's a 220 team if I've ever seen. <laughs> Fuck you. <yeah. laughs> yeah. It's like 150 L15 that <laughs> Yeah. They've not been kicking ass recently. And again, we had a comment here. I think it was from Mickey Fu. When have Lazio ever scored four or five goals? Under Sari, never. 
under the previous yeah. manager, I think it might have been Zaggy. It uh, might have been before Sari. I know he was at Lazio, but I don't know if it was directly before Sari. But, you know, Lazio can score goals when they get going, especially at home. And two doors ball, two door ball is attack, attack, attack. So, yeah, you heard it here first for Charleston out for the weekend. So that means it's Brennan and Timo time, locked in, uh, ready to go. <laughs> Maybe ahead of the weekend. We've not got to MLS yet. We're still kind of. Uh, seeing out here what we've got in Champion Euro. Let's say, uh, pardon me, Napoli then come into the three. I think for the top 10 picture, certainly. They're at home to Frozenone. This is the team on screen here. Cravadonna and Osman are back in town. That midfield three is back in place as well. And yeah, really strong Napoli team looking at home. They are playing Frozenone, who normally have a couple of wonder kids. Sula, Rainier, who is the other one? I don't think he's in the team anymore. Is he injured or something? There was a third one. I forget who it is. Uh, Ibrahimovic, his name is the guy that's on loan from Bayern, mm -hmm. maybe injured or something. But yeah, Rainier maybe plays, but it's fun for me. Should be a good win for Napoli. And the statistics I've got it. What does it say for Napoli players? The goalkeeper defense. Yeah, yeah, heavily 65, 62 on. Interesting. Yeah, goalkeepers and defense. Hmm. Nice. We then got Leipzig at home at Wolfsburg. And Leipzig have kind of got back into a wee bit of Leipzig form where they're smashing decisives, they're getting a couple of goals. And if you've got the right players, the scores are there to be had. Again, I think I said this last week, Harry, but that team does look really strong. The front four is as good as you're going to find in Europe for like base creation and talent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really dynamic. I mean, Openda's had a wicked season, hasn't he? I think he scored a bucket load of goals, a couple of assists as well. And obviously, yeah, Xavi Simons has been great. Um and yeah, sort of Haidara and Shagla sort of at the base, sort of mopping up, have been really good as well, so 5 wise Sesko's probably the only one that's probably been a letdown, I would say. Um, just no consistency in his scoring. But the rest, yeah, they've been they've been really good. Um, again, probably another 30, 40 AA from Simons, isn't it? And if you can get the decisives, you're probably walking to 100 um, with him this weekend against Wolfsburg. You know, they're no mugs. There's definitely goals in that team. But um, like, you know, Leipzig never seem to keep clean sheets. You know, that's just a fact. It's, it's four or five ones, right? That, that's yeah. all we seem to see. Um, so I wouldn't be banking on it, but, you know, it's a decent chance, as there always is, before games, but... <laughs> Shagger. <laughs> Shagger. Shagger. <laughs> love it. No one ever seen a good game from Sesco. Yeah, probably. Uh, but he does love uh, he does love the old goal once in a while. So, yeah, Leibs are getting there. Wolfsburg love their width from the fullbacks here. It's going to be campaign and counter-attack, you think, isn't it? So... Yeah, because this could be like a 3 2 or something like that. You know, it could be a, a good one if you've got the attacking pieces. Maybe not the defence, but yeah, I'm with you there. Brentford. Oh, this is maybe another one that's I've not I've looked at once or twice because, like I mentioned, Jack P won this guy. I've got this guy. Christopher Iyer can do anything. And he's at home to chef you. Ivan Tony is going to start. Wisa looks 50% on for Embuemo. I know this Embuemo guy had a really good run earlier this season, so I don't know if that's better for. Brentford to have Embuemo back because I know Wisa is an SO5 favourite at the moment. Yeah, Embuemo is better SO5 wise, but he's been injured. So, I, yeah, I don't know who actually gets a nod there, honestly. But Wisa scored last game, I think. So, I don't know. And Tony didn't start last game. So, yeah, I don't really know how that sort of pans out. But, um, yeah, Chef at home for, for Brentford looks looks like a tasty lineup um, and matchup for them. But, no, Chef, Chef, interesting. Big, big Diaz up front. McBurney, I mean, you know, they, they can cause an upset. They can ruffle a few feathers. Yeah, they definitely um, can. They've got a few, they've got a few boys. Like, I don't think it's a gimme. I know the the odds say say it probably is, but I don't know. I wouldn't be too sure there. I think Brentford probably take the win on this, but yeah, I I don't know, mate. I just don't see Sheffield scoring to be honest with you, because I think like their name of the game is brutality and height and strength and all the rest of it, and that Brentford back three is like. I know Ayer's my guy and all that, but they're all giants. They're all big centre-backs, you know, that are not going to mess about. So mm. those three playing on those two, like from open they're play. Both, like, yeah, but they're big as well, McBurney. And, like, they're big boys. They're all big boys. Like, they're, you know, none of them are fair. tiny. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I agree with you. There, there's definitely, yeah, definitely be a, you know, a physical battle. Um, and I think, you know, in midfield, they've probably got a bit more legs and, and quality, haven't they, Brentford? So yeah, they, they probably win the game, but... I wouldn't be surprised if Chef score, genuinely. Uh, the midweek heroes for so, some Surya scouts and managers around the world, Atalanta, <laughs> the disarming Liverpool stacks everywhere. They are at home to Hellas Verona. And you're like, 
Again, we're talking about teams that love to attack. Atalanta, that is in their DNA with uh, Gasparini in charge. Karnasheke keeps his place in goals. The back three has looked better in recent years in terms of quality, but hey, these guys will be feeling great about themselves right now. But when you see Pasalic, you see Ruggeri, Coop Miners, Skamaka, De Ketelier, all very attack-minded players in that front kind of five spaces or whatever. So at home at Verona, they'll be buzzing. The fans will be buzzing. I think this will be a good, you know, a famous European result. They'll, you know, they'll want to keep the keep the drums ringing, keep the songs going. And the Hellas Verona, do they have much, maybe a wee bit of pace in the wings with Suslov and Lazarevich? But beyond that, no. <laughs> I don't think yeah, they do. Yeah, dude, uh, Suslov, yeah, they got a few boys, but nah, that, that, that's nothing to... Um... I don't think that does much away to Atalanta personally. And yeah, like you said, the momentum they'll have from the midweek is, yeah, you can't really buy that. So yeah, I, I see them cruising through this. And yeah, Karnaseki with a lovely out, you know, this big scores there that they have had. And I'm sure it could be another one this weekend, if I'm being honest. As long as you can get the rotation right, if there is any, um, I'd say, yeah, there's some big scores to be had there big time. Yeah. I love it. We've looked at Stuttgart already, which is fun. We then have Bologna, which is another one of my teams, sort of, which is good fun. I've only got the goalkeeper, sadly, but the Bologna team is on screen. Josh Zerksey been writing headlines all over Europe. This in Doy, by the way, he doesn't look that great on SO5, but see, when you watch Bologna, he is a player. Like, he is. is ah, yeah, he is a unit, by the way. He'll go somewhere and be really handy. Calafiore gets a lot of the headlines. He is the ball playing left footed centre back across Europe that I think everyone is going to be sizing up for a transfer fee in the summer. Orsolando or Orsolini makes the team again with uh, Luis Ferguson, by the way, who Thiago Mota heavily linked to Juventus. He was linked quite a lot to Barcelona. He did play for Barcelona, but heavily linked to Juventus. And the rumours are going around in Italy. If Mota does go to Juve, the first thing he's doing is taking Fergie with him. So wow. Scottish Warriors, what he calls them. So, you know, we'll kind of watch how they go. Should be a good game for them at home at Monza, who are mid-table. They're 11th, they're not doing too bad. This is their team on screen at the moment. Daniele Maldini. Uh, Pablo Mari, Armando Izzo in defence. You know, there's a few players there. But um, the thing that's annoyed me about Bologna this year is they've been rotating Skorupski for Ravaglia now and again. Ravaglia seems to come in against the bottom-ish teams. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen this weekend because Monza are like 11th. They're not Salernitana. They're not Sassuolo. They're, you know, they're not down here, you know, Empoli mm -hmm. and whatever. So I hope that it's safe for big Skorupski, but it does make me a wee bit worried that He's just got that propensity to put Ravaglia in because he thinks he's a big prospect. But hey-ho, Bologna, great game for them. And we'll we look at, where will we finish this off? I think Barca, oh, I think we'll probably finish with like Athleti, Girona. That's a wee, that's a wee one for mm -hmm. me. If, oh, we've got a few teams here. And then we'll kick into the next region because we are an hour and 20 minutes away from the deadline, guys. But the Champion Euro, the Premier League region, is where the big money is, is where a lot of people are trying to work out. Should I play Classic? Should I play in the Prem? Should I play in-season champ? Da -da -da, all the rest of it. And you really need to get a good feel of the runners and the riders there around. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look at Chelsea because they're playing Everton. And like, if Chelsea were to have a good game on paper, this might be it. Everton have lost another two points, I think, from... FFP stuff, that might have been Forrest, I'm sure it was Everton, but someone else got hit last week with some more penalties. And uh, this is the Chelsea team on screen, Chukwemeka, L15 of 34, 65% to start, could be interesting if you believe in him. Caicedo, no Enzo in this team, it looks like as well, so Caicedo and Gallagher in here. Your boy Badiashio should start this time, rather than <laughs> last week. <laughs> and then Cole yeah. Palmer, obviously, taking all the plaudits. Yeah. I don't know if he does, you know, because Thiago Silva looked good last week. He got a goal as well. Um, yeah, Enzo looks to be out. He's having a scan or something. That news broke today. And yeah, De Sassi's out as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Chelsea, you know, you know, you know who's going to score well for Chelsea. Like, there's no sort of secrets with their team. You know, you just have to look at the SO, you know, the L5s and 15s. It's a pretty obvious, obvious one with them. Um, but yeah, Everton, Chelsea are always battles and. It's Monday night game as well, so not on the weekend. And yeah, I, I don't know. You, you're probably only backing a few players there, aren't you? You know, Palmer, Gallagher. Now, I wouldn't have thought too much about this game had we not just looked at the Serie A table and seen where they're sitting. But Sassuolo are in the relegation zone and they are at home this weekend to AC Milan, who also had Thursday night football play in Roma. So, you know, they'll be, you know, keeping the squad tight, keeping the ship tight. It looks like they won't be making many changes, if any, to be honest with you. I think Luka Jovic didn't start midweek. Maybe Adley comes in as well. But I think a lot of these guys played Thursday night, and like Leal, Pulisic, etc. So, mm. 
I don't really know how they come into this game, but Sassuolo bottom three, you've got to think that favours Milan overall for the victory, doesn't it? You would, but away from home and obviously losing yesterday, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think they'll be buzzing for it, if I'm being honest. And yeah, how, how do they rotate? Obviously, Jovic coming in, does, does Liao, like if Liao doesn't play, then, you know, that's a massive um, sort of threat, you know, sort of voided out. I know they've got other decent players, um, Chikawazi and whatever, but you know, if you, you probably need him to play away away to Sazulo, right? Um, if you want any chance of winning this game. So I don't know. Tomori was suspended yesterday, so I guess obviously he plays and yeah, probably good for a clean sheet, I would say, but I don't know how many goals you'd probably get out of that Milan team. Yeah, that's probably quite fair. I don't know how this game ranks so highly. Really, I don't. I suppose it is for Athletic Club. So, you know, they've just won the Copa del Rey, they're buzzing. They're at home. To Villarreal, the Williams brothers will be in attack. Sunset is back in midfield. Uh, Unai Simon in goals. No place yet for Munain, but who I've seen partying like an animal after they won Copa del Rey. <laughs> uh, so maybe he's still super sub. Um, but yeah, that's their team. And like we were talking about with Atalanta having that famous victory, like Bilbao don't win many cups, you know. So like that is like huge for them, you know, winning that. Even though it was beaten by York in the final, they won't care about that. I haven't beaten Sociedad in the semis, and I think they beat a good team in the quarters. This is the Villarreal team on screen. Danny P is back in the building. Sorloff is probably having the SO5 form of his life. And alongside Jerry Moreno, I think Guedes, oh, Guedes is 40% now. Also, Bertrand Traore is probably going to start this, but with Baena and, uh, and uh, Traore on the wide areas, like these two guys up top should get plenty of service, you know, but... Athletic club very strong defensively. So this may not be that high scoring a game. I wonder where is it AA that they reckon Bilbao are going to scoop it? Mm, midfielders and forwards. Villarreal. Villarreal always seem to con sort of not concede that many recently, but they do seem to let in a lot, like you know, let a shot on goal and whatever, because Philip Jorgensen always seems to get really good AA. So I, I don't know where that comes from. You know, that yeah. possession maybe. Who knows? Um but yeah. Real Madrid are coming off of a memorable 3 3 draw by Man City, and they're playing Mallorca, who lost the Copa del Rey final. Mallorca at home, they'll be licking their wounds a wee bit. You know, but again, they don't get too many cup finals or anything like that. So I don't think they'll, they'll obviously be gutted not to win it, but, you know, I don't think it'll be doom and gloom eh, on, on the sunny island that it is. And they're always formidable no matter who comes to town. So, but again, I look at this team, I just don't think it's Sergi Dardar on 50%. If he doesn't play, he's a big playmaker for them. And uh, a few of these other guys are just. Hard nosed La Liga, you know, players or whatever. Real Madrid looking pretty good at the moment. Probably will be disappointed not to have a bit more of a, con a control over the city game there. But uh, Fran Garcia, who I'm just noticing here, has his eyes closed in the picture. Hmm. So that flash makes me obviously got him, didn't it? The flash. That makes me want to look. I want to look at his card now. I want to see if that's what's on his card because if he's on his card with his eyes closed, I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. That will be hilarious. I don't know, actually. Maybe. Oh, no, these ones are open. That's funny, isn't it? You must Is it last season? <laughs> I must have woke up. I wonder what that picture is, because uh, that's funny. Yeah. Imagine we had our eyes closed. <laughs> you can see it there. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, that is. Oh, we can't zoom that much into it, but yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, but yeah, strong team. Valverde, Modric will get the start in this one. And this will be a great game mm. for Modric to start, I think. You know, tiny wee pitch. You'll get lots of touches of the ball. It's not like he's going to need to go box to box and line to line or anything like that. You can get into a wee pocket and, you know, do his thing, you know, with Valverde, Chumeni, Bellingham running around him. So I think it's a good Modric game. Probably a good game for somebody like Brahim or uh, Vinny, whoever is in attack, to start this game. But uh, when you see, like, Fran Garcia, Nacho, Lunin, Lucas Vazquez, you're maybe not building a defensive stack out of this, are you? Probably not, no. I'm... Yeah, I've, I, I'm one that owns a couple of the fringe Real Madrid boys. So, you know, your Nachos and your Modric's come into... Oh, that's good my, Well, Nacho doesn't, but Modric is my captain, actually, this weekend. I'm giving him the armband somewhere. Um, but yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of, sort of talk about Ardegula starting this one. So don't be surprised if Bellingham doesn't. Um, I don't know where he's behind, but I saw a lot of, like, all the Real Madrid sort of outlets saying, like... You know, are expected to start. I don't know whether anything's changed over the last, like, yeah, some of the first comment there. Ardula should be a star. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of comments um, chatting about that. So I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe things have changed since then. Um, but yeah, Militao coming back, obviously, from his ACL injury. 
Yeah, um, we've got them on 20% here on the other uh, league estate we like. 20% on behind Bellingham. Uh, so yeah, it probably should be I think, you know, you'll definitely get get minutes, million percent, but there was like heavy rumours that you would start that one. So I I don't know, you know, just keep an eye on that. Yeah. And then we have uh, a wee bit of the surprise package of League 1. We don't have that many League 1 predictions on Play Sharp at the moment. The Mets, who are stinking at the moment, are hosting Lons, who we don't have that many cards for. But Ruben Aguilar has returned from his ACL tear, or whatever it was he did last year. And if you look at his SO5 form, he's back to living his best life. He's like the main guy for Lons on the right wing, so he's getting involved in lots of good stuff. We've got Andy Diouf there in midfield, and Andy Laird hero, L15 of 38. Uh, and then that applies Mendy, who's in the squad as well, so there's one for you, so there's a couple of cards there for you. Uh, we then have Ren at home to Toulouse, and uh, Ren, we don't have a lineup for that, I'm sorry. And then after that, we have Barca Cadiz. Now, this will be an interesting one, I think, as well, because Barca, like, I think they kind of mugged PSG off a little bit by getting back into that game, because when PSG took the lead, when well, like, Dembele scored, and I forget who the goal after that was from. Vitinha. Uh, Vitinha, yeah. I thought, wow, PSG, Luis mm. Enrique have maybe got their act together. And Barca have been quite feeble this season. But fair play to Barca, bringing it back. Rafinha with incredible goals. All the rest of it, yada, yada. Again, playing Cadiz. Cadiz, not that bad a team on paper, you know. Like they've got some players that are handy enough and all the rest of it, but uh, in the league table, they're sitting third bottom. 40 goals conceded in 30 games. Can we see at home? Is it bang average, really? Nothing that to, nothing really to be learned there. And the Barca team looks to be able to rotate for the first time in a little while. We're seeing almost mm. a full change. Ah, it is a full change to the front three. Yeah. Uh, the midfield, getting a wee bit of supplementation there as well. And Hector Ford coming in at left back, Kubarisi coming in at centre back. I don't think Kubarisi played PSG. Yeah, so he did. He did. He, did. he, had, Sorry. he had Mbappe tucked up in his pocket. Oh, of he course. Was the, uh, he was on that side, wasn't he? He's on new prodigy, isn't he? Um, yeah, lots of rotation at the top, isn't that? Felix yeah. coming in. Uh, Ferran's been injured, hasn't he, for a while? Ruke coming back. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's a great game for Barca players. They might, you know, a couple of them might score okay, but I don't... Fair and season. Double decisive yeah, on a 72. It, it, <laughs> it is, yeah, it is his type of game to score a couple, isn't it? It really is. A couple of cheeky tap-ins, the Shark. You heard it here first. Uh, Freiburg Darmstadt. I'm going to put that on screen. I don't think I can really talk about it, but can you, Harry? Mm, not really, no. It's snore fest, isn't it? We'll put it on screen. Darmstadt circling the drain. Here's their team on screen if you have any of these cards. And here's the Freiburg team, if you have any of these guys as well. That's we weird go. why Darmstadt comes up as the first team on Sharpo, is that? Oh, yeah, they're away, aren't they? Sorry, yeah. That's... I was so used to seeing all these home fixtures, I thought Freiburg would, were away, um, a home there, sorry. Uh, um, we have another first and eight team, Fiorentina, who yeah. I think they drew with Victoria Pilsen. Or did they win one? No, I forget. But anyway, tight game, second leg still to be played. Fiorentina are playing Genoa. This is the team that's expected to start. Belotti, Lucas Beltran, Nico Gonzalez, Kwame. It's quite an exciting attack. 50% there for the base defender. And maybe Quatra and Milinkovic are going to rotate, but otherwise pretty set. Genoa team. Let's see. It's uh, that guy we want. We've got, I don't know, it says Bonaventura. We've hit that glitch. I don't know who that says anymore, sorry. Jed Spence on the left. Gudmundsson, who's the talk of Europe at the moment, starting an attack. Uh, Junior Messias, who when he debuted for AC Milan last season or something, I think people thought this guy was like an Ansu Fati, uh, Lamine Yamal or whatever waiting to happen. But it turns out he's a Genoa now, he's a bit of a flash in the pan. Retigui, an attack. Uh, again, a lot of teams were after him after his exploits for the Italian national team after playing in Mexico or whatever it was he was up to before Genoa. So anyway, there's that. Mainz Hoffenheim. Now, I really would be skipping this if we didn't know that Mainz have Amiri in town. Uh, so just don't <laughs> game that I don't think anyone will be involved in, but I think everyone wants to see Amiri. And does he have a good supporting cast? There's the team on screen. Looks full strength, Mainz, who are up against it to save themselves from relegation. Hoffenheim, welcome w Weghorst and Max Beer back in attack. Midfield pair of Kramaric and Grisha Promo is a, a wee bit of the good times. Grillish in at centre back still is a bit of a cheat code if he can get some decisives, but he remains there. Uh, and no one else really jumps out. Ozan Kabak, former Liverpool defender. Mm -hmm. Team as well. And then after that, we have Athletic. 
Yeah, this is a big one because Girona can secure European qualification if they win here slash draw. I can't remember what it is, but they definitely need to get some sort of result. I remember seeing that on Twitter. Yeah, it must be like Champions League or something because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or something, yeah. So, Athleti, uh, they won against Dortmund midweek, and I think a lot of people were surprised at how quickly the goals went in for Athleti. Samuel Lino getting on the score sheet and one or two others. And wow, this team has changed quite a lot. It's only been updated very recently. So, I think since we've had training and press conferences or whatever, it looks like El Cholo is going to use the strength of his squad and rotate. And yeah, that stacks up with what I normally look at to confirm La Liga choices and stuff. So, we're going to have Saul. Saul's probably going to be centre mid and Mikel may be left mid. It's Saul, Koke and RDP in midfield. Uh, the rest of the team does kind of pick itself with the pie being injured. Correa comes in to rotate on Morata. And I'm a wee bit surprised Vermeeren isn't going to get a look in in this game because he is impressing a lot in training these days at the moment. And I think his kind of debut, his kind of summons into the team is maybe somewhat nigh. Girona might be too tough an opponent, maybe a wee bit too quick for him. But there's definitely a lot of praise coming out of the Athletic camp for for Vermeeren. And I think that maybe happens uh, sooner rather than later. And then we've got Genoa. Or Girona, sorry, I beg your pardon. Team's pretty nailed on. Saganikov probably doesn't make it now for the looks of it. Jan Kuto will come in at right mid. Uh, Alias Garcia, Yangel Herrera back in town in midfield. Porto in attack with Savio Dovbike. So that's pretty full strength, by the way. It's not, you know, you maybe want Saganikov in over Porto. But, yeah, beyond that, I say I don't think it gets any better for them. So, away from home, should be a fun one for sure. Well, it'll be good to watch. Hard to say. Yeah, I don't know how that'll go, honestly. I'm back in the Girona boys, though, um, to go get a little result there. Because, yeah, Atletico play midweek. They'll have lots of eyes on, on that, you know, the next midweek as well. So, mm. yeah. Is there one more champ game before we move away from it? Worth looking at? I'm going to say Not no. Really. Couple of ways, yeah, not really, mate. That's probably the end of end of champ, I would say. Awesome. So let's move into where oh, we've got never in five minutes to deadlines. One hundred and sixty-seven of you here. You might not know this, guys. Okay, if you're just joining us, but we're giving away a card today. If you check out this post on Twitter at twenty three thousand and one, what I need you to do is like and retweet it, and you will be in the chance to win a free limited card. This deadline show to use this game week. In season Premier League, as long as I can find that, I'll put it on screen for you again. And that is a Destiny Udogi. So be sure to check out the tweet at 23001, like, retweet, get involved in the comment section if you like me and Harry and all the rest of it. Show some support for the thing. And we'll give that away to somebody at random before the end of the stream. We only do have 83 likes, but and I think for 170 people on YouTube at the moment, we should be smashing that 100 mark. So there, like it to be big round numbers. And then that's when they give us all really good RNG luck for the reward boxes and they'll make sure your guys don't DNP and all that good stuff. So if you haven't hit the like button yet, make sure to do that, of course. Jump on to Twitter when you get a second, like and retweet. And uh, yeah, we'll give away the Destiny of Doggy in the next kind of 40 minutes or so. So we have challengers. Now, I don't think we'll be able to go through the lead and bread for challengers because I think a lot of the quality is right at the top there, isn't it? So we probably won't need to dig and dive too far. I think what we might do for this one, Harry, is a wee bit more like we did last week where... I see at the top there we've got Porto, Benfica, Sporting. So we'll probably just run through the three of them together, mm -hmm. and we'll put them and on we screen. Can do Holland as well, because Holland have you know three in the top eight there as well, or top seven. So this is the Portuguese table as it stands now. Sporting Lisbon, a game in hand, four points ahead of Benfica. Uh, Benfica nine points on Porto, and Porto two points on Braga. So kind of top, uh, tough at the top, but. You know, there's not too much left to be decided and Sporting just need to hold the course, don't they? Yeah, it feels like it feels like it's Sporting's to lose, doesn't it? Um, you know, see, looking at the table. But yeah, with you know Benfica playing midweek as well, they'll have an eye on eye on things in that Marseille second leg. Um yeah, sporting team kind of picks itself right now. I don't think there's much to really debate or anything there. Um then Fikas kind of picks itself as well. There will be a few rotations. I think Casper started the first game up front um, instead of Leonardo. I don't know. No Casper in the makeup here at all. Yeah, maybe he got injured or something yesterday. I think he got an assist in the end, um, Casper. But yeah, I don't know if Flo, who, who's behind Flo, is it Kochu? Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had a minute. Well, he's had a minute. Yeah, he came off the bench last weekend for a minute or so. So I, 
I don't know whether they'll integrate him back in potentially. Um, but again, defense pretty solid. Um, is Otamendi out? Is he? Looks or like it. That? Yeah, that's interesting. Bit rotation well, perhaps yeah. from Glenn Hoddle. Yeah, who maybe. reckons there's serious rotation. Yeah, Di Maria. I can see. Yeah, the older boys. That makes a lot of sense. Like cock you, cook you, cowards. <laughs> <laughs> At home tomorrow, is it? It's an easy game. It maybe rests Florentino Lubies. Uh, but yeah, who knows? We'll see how it goes. Because I don't think I really need to put him in the shop window if they're going to be punting him. You know, like mm -hmm. need to show he's actually good and it's not the bombed him out because he's crap. You know, so maybe just they <laughs> don't like him, but he doesn't fit like he's pretending it is. This is a Porto team that are home to your boys, family cow, or your former boys. Yeah, my former boys. I do miss them dearly. I'm always keeping an eye on the on the SO5 uh, tabs of of those or their team. Sorry, but yeah, my Porto boys this weekend. I need a big result for that from them. Sorry. Uh, Pepe suspended. suspended. Yeah, Otamendi suspended. Pepe suspended for for Porto. Or you know, one of the two Pepe. Sorry, uh, you know, up front Pepe's kicking at ninety five percent. But yeah, um, all day pensioner Pepe is unfortunately not with us. But yeah, now it's, it's be a tough game. It, you know, it's not not a gimme this at all. Um, not a gimme at all this one. But you, know, you still fancy a of five wise. And we had to shout at the beginning of the chat. It's maybe PSV week. They're at home oh, to the yeah. test. Full strength team here, isn't it? Yeah, but well, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it is to be fair. Um, Lozano sort of out of the picture in some ways. Tillman's been good recently. The rest of it kind of picks itself. Um, and yeah, they I mean, their win percentage, Quinny, is 90%. I don't think I've ever seen it that high on like a weekend. It's ridiculous. They're going to lose, aren't they? They're going to lose. They probably are going to lose, aren't they? <laughs> that is the game where you put on like a one pound bet of the, the bouquet with 20 teams or something. Right. And, and they let you down first one. <laughs> and it's PSV that screw it, you know, or yeah. something like that. You know, that's just when it's just, such uh, a huge odds on favourite, it's just, right. you know, like, oh, it's, that's dangerous. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, for them to be 15% higher win percentage than the pack is nuts. Like at that level, if that makes sense. This is the game. Yeah, sorry, Holland's been waiting for. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? It's gonna be it's just gonna be raining hundreds. Unless Pax and Aronson can can show us what he's made of in the uh the number 10 for Vitesse. I mean, you know. When you see Eloy rooms and goals, but I think that just gives you a wee bit more faith that PSG are gonna score about four or five, eh? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you're not captain in your PSV boys this weekend, I don't know what you're doing. Um, Heard it here because, first from Harry Boy. Yeah. Captain Dest, Captain Veerman, Captain Tillman. Get them all in. Just don't captain Romalho because he's fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute Love donkey. It. But you'll still score 100 <laughs> just because just of how good the matchup is. But um, yeah, big game. I don't know if this is the next best one, but it's the next one in the list there. We've got AZ yeah, at home to Warwick. Mm -hmm. This is Another a team on screen. Uh, AZ just who just got put? Oh, I was Ajax that got pumped on there from Fire Nord last weekend, but yeah, AZ at home. Yeah, you'd have to fancy the the normal boys to do their thing. Pavlidis and Sugawara, you know. The um, but yeah, that Vison in goal, they got some good players. SO5 wise, I don't know. Whether way, this I, is the game, yeah. I didn't know about this guy until the Soria data, Soria down under second crossover event. This Van de Boys guy. Did you hear them talking uh, about this guy? He's got like 900 last month tackles, isn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there's a proper... See with him, I like that Adoy. He's got really good numbers, by the way. And Vassin, that's yeah. like a solid little defence core. They are, for sure. This, Maybe not just, against AZ, yeah. but in general. Right. Decent set. Yeah, yeah. 100%, mate. Yeah, it's really, they've got, really nice uh, scores. But they've also got Margaret in midfield. Okay. Go on, Mags. Go on, Margaret. Go on, Mags. Oh Maggie. Finer the way to Citadard. This is the team on screen here for Fortuna. Nobody yeah. really jumps out here, do they? Nah. Not really. In Indigo Cordoba's a good little play on that left wing. He gets really good AA for a forward. Like really good. Um nice. but yeah, I don't think they're, they're no mugs, Fortuna. Like I, I don't think Fine Yeah, I, I don't think Fire Nord steamroll them. But you know, after last weekend's win, like Jesus, they'll um yeah, they'll fancy themselves, but I don't think it's like a, another you know, a four or five niller. I, I think it'll be tight. And um, we've got the Ajax team who've just been humbled, like we were mentioning earlier. Uh, wow, the midfield is actually, no one knows who's going to play in the double pivot here. Is it Tahirovic and Manswerk, or is it going to be Van de Boomen, Taylor, or Van de Boomen, 
yeah, Taylor. It's just they're the, they're the options, really, isn't it? So, Robbie's back. Ber oh no, Robbie was back last time. I think Bergwijn's back this time. Yeah, Gotts is still in, um, and this Bergwijn's is the twenty. Is still out, isn't it? Bergwijn's um, still out. Yeah, that Ajax lineup doesn't come. Jesus, it's nowhere near. Have I missed it? I'm trying to look on the tab here. I genuinely can't see it. It's not a good game for them. Yeah, it must be stinking. No, but it's like literally, like incredibly bad. Well, it's good for me. <laughs> <laughs> 20 are a, better, a higher favourite. than. Well, that's, yeah, that just tells you all you need to know, doesn't it, on how bad Ajax are right now. Is uh, there any other games in Holland at the top of that I've maybe overlooked? Uh, yeah, and any, uh, was it still? Yeah, NAC NBC? plays Wall at home. That's a good one. Um, so NAC Celsius will play Volendam as well at home. That even though they're both garbage, they should still probably win that one. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's definitely some good fixtures, home fixtures this weekend in in Holland. There should should be some big scores. Yeah, From that's been there. Holland. That's been Portugal. And then what do we do? Belgium Championship. Belgium from yeah. Turkey. Well, we I don't know ML, MLS Belgium Turkey Brazil's back. You pick you know choose your poison. Brazil, I don't know if we get teams for, first and foremost. Let's have a yeah, gander. We do. Oh, we do. We do. We do. Right. I'm probably just going to click through a few of these. I don't think I can preview the games, but I know this is might be until some of us are after because it's only been updated quite late. So, Internazionale. Oh, no Bernabe for this game. That's a nightmare. He played, after he... he played midweek, didn't he? Yeah. Aye, rocked him, man, with a 90, with no decisive. Know, Absolutely killed him, man. So, he's not in. That's a gutter. But here, this is the team here Santiago Arias. Taishano. Uh, Jean Lucas. Jean Lucas. Here's, here's two yeah, teams here. These, yeah, I think they're new teams into the league. I don't really recognize them. Um, Arsenal's my team. Yeah, he got two decisives midweek. Did really well. Um, obviously, Marcelo's mob. And Felipe Melo, the boys. Yeah. The governor. Red Bull Bragatina. And they've got Sasha in attack. <laughs> yeah. And this guy, by the way, Junior Capishaba, or whatever his name is, Capishaba. You should see his AA, by the way, uh, is monstrous. Is no uh, way. So he's he's not a bad player to watch out for. And we've got Sao Paulo Fortaleza. We've got the goalkeeper for Sao Paulo, nothing else. Fortaleza, full team. Yeah, they go. played yesterday, maybe, or the day before. Uh, yeah, it might be Wednesday, actually. Um, yeah, we obviously have those cards. Vasco, my boys. Come That's on, the boys. Yeah, Jao Victor's come into that sort of back five with Gary Medell mopping up all two foot two of him. <laughs> I'm I'm Vasco da Gama defensive stack this weekend, Quinny. Gremio, by the way. Yeah, Diego Costa's mob. They lost midweek though to some like rubbish team. I can't no, was it that rubbish? I can't remember if it was was it an Argentinian team? I don't remember, but they got they got battered, I think. Let me know in the chat, lads, who they lost to. But I'm sure they got bad 2 or 3 0. Um, Grenfell's mini was a big game. This is probably, yeah, the, the sort of standout game um, as far as team names and players and whatever. Um, Hulk and his boys are away from home, but obviously got a lot of firepower. Sc um, Scarpa and Paulinho. Paulinho, sorry, Hulk. Alan Franco, ex Charlotte FC. What a boy. Yeah, Tatsuko Paranese. Two yeah, cards in they're, there. They're not up to too much, these two. Atletico go. It's a new team to me. No cards. Flamengo. Luis Arajo, Nico De La Cruz, Ayrton, Augustin Rossi, Everton. Mm. That's an SO5 team, isn't it? No, I actually just bought myself a Luis Arajo rare card um, in, in the week after seeing his performance. One of my best mates from college is Brazilian. He's actually He was actually at the game. And um, he's a massive Flamengo fan, so I get all my my Flamengo intel from him. Um, and I was asking him about Dela Cruz. He was just like, "Oh, mate, he's just unbelievable. Just such an all round midfielder." He was like, "I've got to get my um, I've got to get my new Flamengo jersey with you know his name on the back." So, Love that. yeah, he looks like he's a boy in town, isn't he? If he can stay fit. Cruzeiro Botafogo. Oh wow! Yeah, they got ten strikers. Botafogo, and that's yeah, and that's without good. Savarino as well. By the way, they could have five. <laughs> But I think Savarino and um, what's his name, Reynoso, have both gone AWOL in uh, Argentina, I think. <laughs> They're both just living, living it up in Arge. Um, These are some really good players, but by the way, 
Like, yeah, mate. Honestly, Jafinio, Luis mm-hmm. Enrique, they got they got some good good players. Um, the probably even this really Gregor, make- even Miami signed him. He was yeah, he like coming off the, the back of a huge season in Brazil, like being a yeah, monster. Yeah. So if he can get back into a team, he'll be handy. Mm-hmm. Big time. I mean, the last one we've got is Vitoria Palmeiras. Vitoria, I've got Zika in right back, no other cards. And Palmeiras, of course, we've got licensed. This uh, Rafael Vega, Quinny, he got three assists last night. He is like the SO5 boy, if you're talking Brazil midfielders. Nice. He is, you know, the Carlos Hill, the whatever wrapped in one as far as scores go. He, he looks ridiculous. Moreno from, um, who was he playing for in Arge? Was it Rassin? I can't remember. It might, I think it was Rassin. Oh, that Annabelle, Annabelle Moreno. Oh, I don't know this guy. Oh, uh, he's like, yeah, he's been touted. I think it's drafting that picture. Yeah, he, he's a good little player. They've got a really decent team. Obviously, Hendrick as well. And, um, yeah. I think we'll give MLS the same kind of treatment. We'll just click through all the games and look at the teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's so good. many of them. Portland at home to LA. Team is on screen. Oh, DNP, or not a DNP, non carded striker. Maybe it takes yeah, a wee bit of wind out some of the stacks. Yeah, I think he's the D- uh, DP as well. Rodriguez, or one of the DPs. Um, yeah, LA have been fine. Like, they've got a good team. Tillman's been scoring really well. Buanga's had a couple of goals recently. Um, defensively, they look a bit shaky, though. Like They are just leaking goals, but they do have a lot of firepower. Um, I can see there being like goals in that game, 100%. This one, not so much. <laughs> um, I, th- I think Charlotte probably win it, but you know, Toronto are just looking terrible right now since Insigne's obviously, unfortunately, got injured. Um, Sean Johnson is back, though, which is good, obviously, for both of us, Quinny. Hey. Um, I think he might actually have a good game here. I, I don't see him conceding three, but I do con- see him conceding. So it's just yeah. how much AA can he get? Um, Charlotte, when I watched, it, watched him again, Cincy at home, I think. No, yeah, Charlotte were at home to Cincy, I think it was. They gave him a wicked game. Like, you know, they really did. Charlotte at home are not bad at all. They're really, really not. They've got, obviously, Abada in there, Vargas, Capetti. They've got a decent team. And, um, you know, good manager as well with, you know, decent pedigree in the Prem or whatever with, you know. So, like, yeah, they're, they're not, you know, they're not to be messed with at home, I don't think, Charlotte. I would agree. Very formidable at home, even in their inaugural season, weren't they? So, mm-hmm. yeah. DC United, big De Benteke in attack still. Aaron Herrera right back. Click in midfield. Yeah, they got a few SO5 boys here. 100% Klitsch, Benteke. Jared Stroud's been decent as well, looking at looking at his L5. And I was like, yeah, he came up on SD for me a few days ago. Um, he's got like mid and forward cards and whatever. But yeah, Orlando away. I don't know. I don't know if I... They've got, you know, they've got the firepower there. I, I, I don't know if they're really going to be allowed to do much SO5 wise. Um, but the players are there. It's just, you know, DC away is not the best of fixtures, I don't think. Um, has been easier and years gone past for sure 100%. Montreal team's on the screen if anyone wants it Joseph is in town oh mate I watched them against Seattle Quinney on the weekend oh mate mm. Joseph Martinez is done he is finito mate I'm telling you I've never seen like I just don't know what I'm looking at the other strike is really good by the way Kakaro or however we pronounce his name mm-hmm. Kakaro I don't know how you say it but he's really decent like he didn't score anything but like He's a good player. Chenier is a good player. The rest of them, they, yeah, they're rubbish. Lasseter La is a good, good little player as well on the left, left, uh, left wing back. But yeah, since though last game with dodgy, they they lost in they to Red Bulls at home. Um, I watched that game as well. I, yeah, I don't know. You know, they, they obviously need Acosta to be like Acosta's body language is just shocking. Like I love him. Like I have his cards stuff right, but he gets so frustrated with the team. Like it's. It's like it's a bit of a uh, what's the word? I don't know what the word is, but like it just cut. Like if I was playing with him, my head would just go because I know he's a joke. Like he is ridiculous, but his head goes so much it would make me like not want to play very well in a weird way. He's always moaning and stuff, and yeah, I don't know. I, I know he's probably just demanding more, and that, you know, there's definitely other ways to look at it. But um, you know, some of the players just aren't on his level, and it's just it's tough to it's tough to um to play with. But yeah, I mean. I do still fancy Cincy here. Montreal are just not good at all. Got some interesting chat coming in here around Joseph and everything else as well. But uh, love to, to yeah. love to hear. I mean, yeah, Glenn, that's that's a good point. Rui, Rui Diaz actually looked decent on the weekend. But that's the first game I've Seattle hadn't won a game, so I'm only going off what I'm seeing, you know. And they were pony for the first five games or so. But he did play. He did play really well on the weekend. 
Red Bulls at home at Chicago. Traditionally, at home at Chicago is a good fixture in MLS. Team looks pretty strong. Yeah. Vanazier, Morgan, Forsberg is the attacking complement. Pretty tidy. Amaya, yeah. Tolkien. You know, they've got some pieces here, don't they? Mate, yeah, Red Bulls, Red Bulls battered Cincinnati away from home. Like, they're the team right now. And I, I called it at the start of the season. I said Forsberg's going to be the man. And it's just kind of turned out that way. So... I can't get them all right, Quinny, but I do get a couple of them right from time to time. And to be fair, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to work that one out, did you? Forsberg coming to the MLS. Like, you know, despite all the sort of <laughs> personal troubles <laughs> that he's found himself in, he's still managing to do the SO5 business, which is all we care about, right? Um, it doesn't really feel like he has personal troubles. It feels like he's ran away from his personal troubles, so he's not brought them with him. Right. He's no, left them back in Sweden. He's like, right, you stay yeah, there. There is, there is <laughs> trouble. Like, there's trouble somewhere. Yeah, you're right. He has. He definitely hasn't taken them with him. That's that's for sure. Um, <laughs> he's definitely sacked them off. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is a really good game. I, I'm a Brady owner. I really do. Yeah, I, I can't see how they don't concede a couple here. Um, if not, if not three and fours. And then we have New York City at home to New England. Uh, New York City team is on screen for you now. It's full of disappointments if you just look at it. <laughs> it's just Santi, Santi, Santi or nothing, isn't it? Yeah, Santi and Sands. Santi and Sands or nothing. Um, or Freeze, to be fair. Matt Freeze is... Uh, Matt, what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Is it Matt? Yeah, Matt Freeze. Yeah. It's Matt Freeze, but yeah. He, he's been decent, to be fair. Um, yeah, this is like a weird game. As in like two big clubs, you know, MLS-wise. But like as far as how they're playing, you know... And SO5 scoring-wise, it's just not where it's at um, at all for them. No, nah, not at all. So no one's excited about that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dallas, who barely have any cards, it looks like. Um, yeah, they're struggling just, big time. No, no Jesus. No, uh, no, well, How do we not have a picture of Sebastian Legit? They, yeah, I don't know. Because like, I own that Tomasi, the right back. Like They do have cards. They all have pictures on their cards and stuff. Like I don't know. Something's gone on there with Opta. But... Maybe that's the the problem. Maybe I need a Sebastian Legit. Maybe that's what I need. I don't know. I don't know if he's the answer. To be oh, honest. by the way, by the way, we Seb, he's back. We Seb's back. He's okay. He's, okay. he's a good player, but like Dallas are just woeful, and Seattle coming off that big win. Like I said, I know it's away, but I I think Seattle steamroll these here. Ooh, um, JP back. Yeah, he came off the bench last game against Montreal. Had a few touches. Looked sharp. Um, like this is the Seattle that we've been waiting for. I know it's only one game in, but like that's the eleven basically. Um, he's literally, yeah, he literally has. Uh, team looks good. I know I slagged off Rui Diaz, but he is. He um, that Rui Diaz actually looked quite quite sharp. But anyone, will, Quinny, we'd look sharp against Montreal. I'm sorry to say it. I'm not saying. Yeah, no, I'll give you a little compliment there. I'm not saying Rui Diaz. <laughs> <even look bad. laughs> But Rui Diaz did look really good on the weekend. And, you know, when you've got players like Rusnak feeding you and whatever, you know, it's quite hard not to look look sharp. Um, Roldan looked good as well. Morris looked decent. Um, but yeah, Jao Paulo being back is massive if, if he does start, though. I, I don't know if he does, if I'm being honest. In 60% that, like, has, on. Maybe still Vargas. Yeah, but... Vargas played with Atencio last game. Yeah, they, they look pretty good. I know they're young or whatever, but I don't know. Maybe he does play. Maybe he does. SKC, uh, oh, Polito's in the mid. I was going to say, no, Polito there for a bit. He's there. Uh, yeah, this is, looks pretty strong, actually, this team overall. Yeah, I think they had a 3 0 with Portland last weekend, which was mad. Um, uh, the only A team but this week. The A team's back. Back in there. I don't know. Vigant and Busquets, all the boys are back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if Messi turns up, if Messi fancies there, this game's whatever you want it to be, right? So it's just, it's all, it's all on him. You know, that's just how this Inter-Miami team works, simple as. It could be a good Messi game because SKC have got a good home support, you know, and Messi loves a bit of, you know, atmosphere and stuff. You know, SKC has definitely got one of the grounds that I think, you know, the fan base are mad for it. You know, they've really... Because SKC is like, you know, they used to be called Kansas City Wizards, but it's like one of the oldest clubs in America, you know. So the fans are pretty uh, established in that regard. So it could be a good one for Messi if he feeds off the atmosphere. Um, Glenn says he's he's going to the game tomorrow. Oh, where's Glenn? Oh, there he's there. Oh, brilliant, mate. Definitely want to see some pictures from that. And it's been moved to the Chiefs Stadium. That's mad. The Messi effect. He's in town, baby. He's in. Wow. Yeah. Do you think they'll fill that stadium? 80,000 for Messi? 
think that's a lot. I'd be shocked if it does. No chance. Yeah, they don't. They don't get eighty thousand. I'm sorry. No chance. Arsenal cards but, on there. Gab Mag not in training. Just a wee side one there. Ooh, nice call on that, Charles. Laney will be there also, by the way. We may have a wee bit of uh, Sore on tour on the go at the, the Kansas Chief Stadium, or whatever you call it. So that'll be fun. We've got the Minnesota team on screen if anyone wants to see it. We've got the Finnish combo of Pookie and Lord still running the show. Uh, Dane St. Clair and, and Goals. Yang Sang Bin. Cool. Boxall. Will Trap. Houston, still no Achi but they've got Gregus. They've got Sviatchenko and a few other guys. Yeah, I think Minnesota, good game for Minnesota, that. RSL with Arango and Luna in attack. Don't really see anything else to really write home about, but they're at home. Really, no. yeah. If we're going to have a good game, it is normally at home, but Columbus crew are probably too good for this team, aren't they? Mm, they're Cucho less, though. Oh, yes, of course. No. Oh, what's the deal with him? It was a suspension. He's back. He's back. Yeah, he just got red carded on the weekend. He played midweek in the League's Cup or whatever, the CONCACAF situation. So... Yeah, he's just he's just got a red, but now, nah, mate, honestly, that well, no Rossi either from what I'm seeing there. So that is yeah. a, um, yeah, so rotated. Yeah, other than Morris, like you take Morris out of that team, that team's rubbish. I'm sorry, but it just is. Yeah, fair like, enough. It's not. It's not. You know, it's not Columbus, and yeah, Salt Lake could have could have a few goals in that game. I think Definitely. this is probably going to be one of the toughest games to pick. Eh? Vancouver at home to LA, Gold, White, Peacock, Front Three, VT, and Midfield. And uh, Galaxy pretty well shaped up at the moment, aren't they? That's a bit of yeah, a fight. Mate. I've watched Galaxy a few times now, and yeah, mate, they they've got some serious firepower defensively. They're suspect in that, like they have good players. Like I do rate their fullbacks and Yoshida, like lots of experience in there. But like they do just, or they just are leaking goals. As simple as as do most MLS teams. They score goals, but, you know, they'll outscore you, but they will concede. So clean sheet wise, you've got no chance. Um, Vancouver, this is their last home game of that four home game stretch they've got. Quinny, if you, it's, it's sort of not relevant really, but Vancouver's next like three months are absolutely horrendous. Like they're basically away all the time and like the home games they do have aren't good basically. So this is like the last good game for Vancouver, I would say. Like if you're looking at matchups, um, they've had four in a row. Like they've had their four, four homes. I know, but you know, I said this uh, to you and Laird, Deja Gold, you know, like. People said this Gold. last season and then they went away from home and they were better. They loved being away Gold. from home. Gold hasn't scored above 60 all season, Quinny, so we it's can't because they've been really... home the whole time. He wants to go away. Uh, to the, the, Scots. the Scots just love an excuse. <laughs> they love an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think there'll be... Honestly, I think there'll be a lot of goals in that game. Like, a, a lot from both sides. I really, really do. I think Scaled I've said that for every game so far, but... What's the news coming in here? Scales and Maeda out, and David Taylor has got like a lot of absences here for Bournemouth as well. So, wow. Um, <clears throat> some breaking news in the chat. Keep up to date with it, guys. Don't forget to hit the like button when you're here. We have broke through the 100, but guys, we do. We have broken through the 200 mark for how many are watching, viewing us on YouTube at the moment, which is phenomenal. Thanks to everyone for joining the show today. Please do not forget to hit the like button on arrival. Get into the comment section, let us know about the news. The the, you know, the, the highs and the lows of all the press conferences as it's coming out, guys. We have 40 minutes to the deadline. We have a Destiny Udogi Limited to give away as well. If you want to get involved to win that Destiny Udogi, like and retweet this post here. Jump into the comment section if you actually like me and Harry and show some support for the cause. Um, or unless you're just here for the news, and fine. Just like and retweet. That would be enough. You'll get involved in that. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone joining us. We've broke through the 200 mark. It's officially, I think, a record for the deadline show. So thanks, everyone. It does please me and Harry to see you all here joining us. So thanks very much. And don't forget, once again, to smash that like button. Uh, oh, Rocky for scales. By the way, I might have an in-season option now. <laughs> so I might have some deadline drama and a half. I think we're going to need to skate through MLS, Harry, we do have 40 minutes to go to the deadline. SK, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, San Jose Earthquakes at home. Team is on screen for you. No big boss players here. Maybe Pellegrino. If he gets a card, um, and they're playing the Rapids, who have got a lot of fun cards in their team. Yeah, I don't know. It's a weird game now. That's probably, you know, I, I can't really call that. It's a horrible game. I don't I don't think anyone should be feasting their eyes on that one. Yeah, fair. Um, Almada, the one-man yeah. army for Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, no Giacomakis, but or maybe not. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, Almada, it's the Almada show there. There's no one else really. Brooks Lennon as well, to be fair, has been pretty decent. And Philly Dilly. Yeah, solid team. Really solid. Wagner on a 50-50. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that one, but yeah, I'd fancy Philly there, even though Atl- uh, Atlanta's been uh, been good at home. And then we've got the the Black Attack here, Andy Black's boys at home. Yeah, they haven't really been firing either. They're still missing Lawen or Lu- Luen, however you pronounce his name. Um, yeah, yeah, they really need, have been. They really well. need to get their recruitment policy sorted, don't they? they need to get some stars in at St. Louis. You know, they're yeah, they're dealing with too many guys. I know Klaus was supposed to be that, but he hasn't really been recently anyway. Um, Pompey's a good little player on the wing. Yeah, they are missing missing that the big names. Yeah, and Vasilev. They, they've got decent players, but nothing crazy, you know. And then we've got the Austin team on screen here. Drew is still in town, which is cool. Rubio in attack. Yeah, cool. But, uh, Turkey, what are the big games in Turkey? Trabs and Sport, I think, was in the matchup stamp, wasn't it? This is a Trabs and Sport uh, team. Fenerbahce is the biggest... I tell you, sports second, and then yeah, Trabs on sports third, just behind Gala. Sorry, just in okay. front of Gala. So there's the Trabs and sport team if you want to see it. Some big players here Munayir, Visca, eh, Ozdemir. This guy's on a bit of form. Big Paul or Nicholas Pepe in attack. Some great options for a team like Trabs and Sport. Eh, Kikir, linked to Celtic again, L15 of 43 goalkeeper. Against a Civil Sport team, do they have goals at a glance? I'm going to say no, but I'm not going to investigate the table. You said Hataya Spore had a good game. This is a Hataya Spore team on screen if any are stacking them up. Gulam, he's a bit of an SO5 gone hero of yesteryear, former Napoli fullback. Um, Dervis Soglu, he's got a Burnley kit on there. I don't remember him doing anything, but they're playing yeah, Istanbul Spore. Played. Yeah, they're the, they're the whipping boys, aren't they, of that league, I think, Istanbul Spore. Fernabachi away to Fatih Karagumaruk, who have Salvatore Sirigu in goals, alongside the likes of Bertolacci in midfield and Lasagna in attack. We've still got a bit of an Italian flavour here at Fatih Karagumaruk. I know it's not Pirlo anymore, but the manager, I think, is Italian. I can't remember his name. Uh, and then we have Fernabachi, who are the favourites. Oh, Batshuai, Batman is in over Dzeko. Mm, that's interesting, yeah, a little rotation for the midweek. Stop the press, guys. Soyonchu and Bonucci. <laughs> That's brilliant. Lovakovic. Ferdi Kadogoglu, by the way, has reports circling around today that Aston Villa are pressing on signing him. He'd be a great mm-hmm. fullback for Villa, I think. So one to watch out for. Uh, and that should be a good game for them. Gala, we're in the reckoning there, so we'll slide them on. They're away to Alanya Spore, who have Leroy Fair in midfield. And I don't think anyone else you might know. Uh, so yeah, Gala Task yeah. and I, pretty strong, but Harry. Icardi, yeah, Mertens. Yeah. All the boys are in town, aren't they, there? Big time. No Zayic. Mm. I don't see... I'll put Besiktas on screen, just because they're a bigger club, uh, in case any of have got their team. Getson's starting. Jonas Fenson's starting. Rashika on to start. Kelisoy in over Abubakar. Uh, Gressel on the wing as well. Or Gessel, whatever you call him. And they are playing... No way! They're playing Samson Spore, who have Olivier and Cham in the number 10 <laughs> position. Alongside Florian Tate. And do they have any other heroes in this team? Carlo Hosa. That's a fun team, by the way. Yeah, it's a weird team, that, isn't it? Got, got some random names there that you wouldn't think are playing in those positions, but but are, <laughs> in, in whatever reason. But um, for whatever reason, sorry. But yeah, weird one. Very weird. I think we'll look at Leeds because they reign so high. Do we have many predicted teams in the Championship? We've got Leicester as well. They get a good game, I'm not sure. But here's Leeds uh, on screen for you. To do. Uh, yeah, Leeds won or draw last game, so they'll definitely want to want to try and get a little little win there. Southampton at home to Watford is probably the second best in the champ, and then after that, yeah, you're not looking yeah into Lipswich, who we don't really have cards for actually. Awesome. So that'll take us to contender, and we're not going to have much time to run through contender. We'll probably talk about Celtic. And any other key teams that are kind of up there because we are. Yeah. I need to get this card away and I need to change some teams, Harry, with some of the news that we've been getting. No, no. Uh, Mate, to be honest, though, contenders go. like a, a weird situation when, when me and Led went through it midweek. Like, there's not that many teams that you'd even want to go through. You know, you got your Celtic, but like outside of that, maybe Zagreb, like genuinely from the top like 15 there, the rest are a couple of obviously second division teams. Like, there's actually not that much to really um, like look into because it's all Peru and. Ecuador, Colombia, you know, there's actually not that much going on. So McBride's updated this as we've been on stream, which has been great. He's getting McGregor at 85. So is McGregor in training? Jay or anyone else who's been keeping up to date with the Celtic stuff, please let me know because I didn't have McGregor playing in this one, but let me know. We've got Naraki probably coming in for Scales. We've got Yang probably coming in for Maeda. 
Uh, I think that team probably is. Uh, McGregor's my only question mark. I don't think he was suspected to start until maybe now. So, uh, no, 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 no. What's that, Andy Laird? What you no, 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 in that? <laughs> so, Pauline and Keel, maybe? Oh, no, 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 no. Let's see. Uh, let, hearts are at home at Levy, so I'll slash that on screen. Shankland is back from his little stomach bug or whatever it was that kept him out last week. And this team is really, there's a lot of good SO5 cards in here if they have the right game. It's just about a wee bit of that Scottish football luck where maybe they actually get the result we expect them to and they don't disappoint. Mm -hmm, definitely. Having me glance at Motherwell there, a wee bit selfishly. Um, Rangers Ross County, I don't think we care about Rangers enough since there's not that many cards. And yeah, it's probably quite predictable. So I think we'll look at Zagreb, St. Pauli, Kiel, and then Vienna. And then I'll probably yeah. I'll probably be all she wrote for contender. Harry, you can show us your teams. I'll decompress for a second, and then I've got a giveaway, and we've got teams to 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 iron out. So Gorica are the home team, unfortunately, to Dinamo Zagreb. Who, wow, that's actually maybe as strong as Zagreb have been in recent weeks with Baterina definitely nailed on, Pekovic nailed on, uh, and maybe one or two others, but Spikic maybe, has he been out? Yeah. Yeah, he play, he Quite came strong. off the bench last game. His Kane Kaneko was suspended for mm. the last one, so it's like a coin toss on him, I would say. Um, Hadjik split team on screen if anyone wants it. Lavaja, Brackentown maybe. They've got like a 17-year-old in goal as well, Hadjik. Ooh. Or 19, yeah, he's really young. Remember the name? Remember the name. And then we've got Rika, who are in amongst it as well. This is their team on screen. Yeah, hoping for a nice little clean sheet from the boys this weekend, please. Please and thank you. And uh, yeah, Rapid Vienna against Klagenfurt was probably the best game of the week. Grill, the standout player here, probably. Maybe Burgstarler can get in amongst it. Niklas Hedl, of course. Uh, but my favourite to many and few. And yeah, we're playing Austria, who are rubbish. And I think it was Bundesliga 2 with the last ones, wasn't it? St. Pauli and Kiel. So yeah. Kiel are at home to Osnabrück. They've got Machino in attack, Jap Japanese international, if memory serves me right. Lewis Holtby in midfield, pulling the strings. And they've got Wiener in goals. L5s across this team are really high, aren't they? Good couple yeah, of L15s this, to follow. They're smashing, mate, to be fair right now, Kiel. St. Pauli team at home to Elversberg, who are like 11 for something. St. Pauli looking at a secure promotion. And yeah, it's a real full-strength team here. Hartel and Jackson in the in the pivot there. Egestine, Sad and Metcalf in attack. And Sally Akis still running the show in defence. Yeah. Anything else to Lots of good at? scores in... Um, I think that's about it, isn't it? Probably about it, to be honest. We have J-League, like Hiroshima play away, but still probably favourites. But outside of... Outside of that, there's not really, honestly, too much to um, to get stuck into. Uh, don't <laughs> disrespect to somebody, Harry, that you should be up on earlier on. Adin, is he the centre half? Is he the Turkish centre half? Yeah, I think I think I know his name, but I'm not 100. percent Not 100. percent We're still waiting on the. Still waiting on the McGregor confirmation here, but yeah, lots of changes, lots of action happening here. Harry Boy, do you want to show us what you're running out and I'll set the giveaway up? Yeah, yeah, let's get let's get stuck into that. Um, yeah, lots of teams out this weekend. Obviously, with Brazil back, I've I'm, I'm at like full capacity to be fair. Um, I'm gonna <clears throat> try my luck at in season division one in Prem. I've I think I like avoided it last weekend just because I wanted to see. Well, I knew I had decent fixtures this weekend. Um, late little swap for for Sarabia. Um, I did have Soboslai in in there instead of him, but I've gone with with Sarabia away to away to Forest, and then the second team's going into Division Two, and then the classic Division Three team, which probably will be goalieless if obviously if Bart starts. Um, just maybe a little box collector there. Excited for the Prem action, and then Champ comes alive because Las Palmas uh, obviously have a decent well not obviously but they have a decent fixture at home to Sevilla. And then I'm back in the, the Girona boys and then a little a little box collector there in Division 4 Classic. Velez is suspended, so obviously he won't play. But yeah, a couple of players that should get starts there, but not expecting anything at all, really. Um, Champ is really busy. Uh, sorry, Challenger is really busy. This is where I've got 
the most of you know the most of my supers and and rares i would say um in the season and classic so yeah brazil being back um deploying the old vasco da gama stack in classic so that's like my highest classic team because like i mentioned at the start of the stream if you're here i unfortunately got relegated from that um on the weekend or last weekend uh, thanks to magnus Matson. so yeah, running two in-season teams. I'm going to try my luck at in-season Div One. I know, I know the scores are ridiculous there, but I've got to try it. You know, my 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 fixtures all line up quite nicely, all at home, back in Santi Rod to to spoil the party for for the revs, and then yeah, a, a Division Three in-season team which has a few stragglers in, but could still you know punch. And the scores in you know Div Three aren't anywhere near what you know, you need in Div 1 or Div 2. I could play Div 2, could I? Yeah, I could play Div 2 in season technically with that Div 3 team, but I'm I'm just avoiding it. Don't ask me why. I've just got a funny feeling I can scrape something in in, in season. Um, Div 3, and then, yeah, uh, what have I got here? For, yeah, so I got relegated in D1 rare in season, which was annoying because Porto decided to lose to Vittoria and Pepe got sent off, so... We're running it again. This was the same team I played, Bar Acosta, um, coming in this week. Obviously, no MLS special weekly, but that goes into Division Two. But I'm playing two teams in Division Two. Uh, yeah, Division Two in season. So we're trying our luck there. You know, the teams are technically competing against each other in one way, and then the the in season, sorry, the classic season. A um, couple of nice fixtures there. Lots of at home. Lots are at home. Sorry, but Rusnak and Araujo with favourable away fixtures, and then the second. Um, Challenger team. I am backing big Svenkums to get back into the the Gen fold. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, Sean John obviously doesn't have a great fixture. And yeah, that's obviously a few stragglers in there. And then Contender looks something like this. Two in seasons, two classics. Um, back in the Riker boys. In the main lineup with Idrissi, I'm back in Usami. He might get rested, but I'm I'm backing it for the in, for the second in season lineup I have there. Classic season back in the uh, couple of Mexican boys, couple of Ecuadorians in there as well, and big Kelly Roos in goal, um, and a Colombian. And then yeah, just a, a sort of leftovers team then for for Div Three. Spit um, Spitich coming down. Hopefully he starts. He might not. Whatever. And then yeah, a little road to glory team there in Division Four. Then we go over to under twenty threes, which. Yeah, pretty happy, pretty excited about uh, lineup wise and matchups. Double forward, the under twenty three rare is a bit naff with you know Brady and goal, but you know Vinny might get a decisive from the bench or something. I yeah, I'm not really like I'm really not prioritizing under twenty three rare right now. It's one of the last lineups I make if I'm being honest. Under twenty three super rare is probably one of the first I make though. Um, I am prioritizing that and then caps. I brought in a big Thomas Kaminsky lads from Pavel. Hopefully pulled his pants down in a trade yesterday. Um, yeah, I got rid of my Lezchuk and Balbuena Dynamo defensive stack because, yeah, they're just killing me right now. And I'll be honest, I, I'm not too fussed about playing contender super. I'm just not. I'm just really not. So, uh, you know, my contender super is now moving down to 240 for now. Kaminsky will be used, obviously, as a 240 keeper uh, probably for the rest of his life. <laughs> now, but if, I, I'm hoping they get relegated and obviously I'll have a lot more, you know, challenger um, depth even though I have a decent amount already, that's kind of where all my super rares are segregated. So, um, yeah, that's how that looks. 220, bit of a throwaway. 240 is quite fun. Modric captain. I'm back in Brennan. Um, I've got Saul in there, Busio and Campalat's been decent for Pendix Bo and a little 220. And, yeah, not playing not playing All-Star. I do need to do my training, though, which I'll probably obviously get get done now. But that's, that's the extent of... Um, of my boys, let's just stay out of super. Man, I wasn't much of a threat anyway. Let's be honest, Led. Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I think I'm happy with my trade. I really am. Um, I needed. Yeah, I didn't really care who I got, and I just wanted another starting goalie. Let's check. Might not start this weekend if I'm being honest with how bad he's been. Um, and I, I'm quite happy to get out of Russia. That winter breaks a killer, and I just don't think I can afford to have a super goalie with that amount of winter break. Um, and bringing in a potential championship goalie is like I'm going from one end of this spe spectrum to the other, aren't I, as far as utility goes? So, yeah, that's hope. You know, that, that's hopefully how it all works out for me. You know, football's a funny old sport. They probably don't get relegated, do they? Now, in <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. And yeah, I'm, I can kind of sleep at night with what I've done.
It looks solid, mate. A lot of options there and lots of teams out, which is great to see. Uh, this is the final call, guys. You've maybe got like a minute just on the latency of the stream and everything. But we have about 42, en we have 42 entrants at the moment. Uh, I'll just hit a wee refresh here on the Twitter giveaway. I'm about to do it the now. So if you want to win a Destiny Dog Unlimited, all you need to do, get 30 seconds, a minute to do it, jump onto Twitter, at Quinny3001, <clears throat> find this uh, post here, like, retweet, and if you like me and Harry in the show and all that good stuff, drop a wee comment down below and show some love. And uh, yeah, we're about to give away a wee cheeky Destiny Udogi for it. So this is last orders, okay? I'll give it another wee 10 seconds, just in case you're between your apps, you're waiting to do the wee like and retweet and help us all out. Winner count is one. Must follow. We're not putting that in. Yeah, I'm not even asking you to definitely like, just support the bloomin' post. That's all we're asking for. Let's load the tweet up. What do we have? How many entrants? Did we get an extra one or two in right before? Oh, I think we're maybe did. Let's hit continue. Okay, cool. We've got you all locked and loaded there. Everyone's ready to go. And we have got a Destiny Udogi Limited. Oh, I'd normally like to play with the system so it gives us like a 12 second we run here. But without any further ado, the winner of the Destiny U Doggy Limited is Ricky Lomas. Congratulations, Ooh. my man. You've been a big supporter of the channel for a while, mate. Glad to see that. Good win there. GG's to you. I'll go and get that shipped out uh, like right now, basically. If you just give me a wee moment. Harry's just filling out some stuff, so I'll put that on screen. Well, Ricky, I find your Surya Club name. If you're here in the chat, let it be known. I'll send you a wee DM as well. Congrats. What's your club name? And I'll just even search it on Surya just in case. We do have a Ricky Lomas. We do, we do, we do. Let me see, let me see. Woohoo, Ricky Lomas. Just confirm, mate, who got the Assist FC snake hips. You don't have a Twitter account linked to it, but with that Coventry badge and the OG badges you've got here, I've got a feeling this is you, mate. But just confirm that for me, Ricky, and we'll get that Udogi uh, sent over to you like the now. So you might use it. Scales is out. We're just uh, Rocky or Welsh. I think it's probably going to be Rocky, but it could be Welsh. I'm, I would go Rocky personally. Um, and uh, yeah, just let us know. We can get that shipped over to you ASAP and I can get my teams tweaked out because there's a lot of tweaking out to be done. I'll maybe just open a new tab and then I can leave that sitting there. What a Hall of Fame that is. Love to see it, don't you? Love to see that. Uh, awesome. So my team's coming into this weekend where I thought kind of set. I've just deleted a few because I know I'm going to need to rebuild them and whatever. I don't think I need to do anything with champion, Harry. In season, I've got two Division 2 entries going out. I've got the Sociedad stack. We've got Galan in season, Baron Ashea in season alongside Oyer Azabal in a great fixture. Captain Goretzka in season in midfield. And then we're playing that Skorupski with a great fixture. It's a wee bit tent. You know, it's always that wee dice roll. He might fuck me, but that's what it is. And then the second in-season team, Angelino will be coming in for Roma. Uh, Spinazzola, back from injury, played 90 minutes on Thursday night. There's no chance he's starting at the weekend for me. And Timo Werner in attack alongside Tati Castellanos with the captain's armband and Aliesh Garcia in midfield. I'm hoping both of these teams get in amongst it, like a dug-eat and beat route, but we'll see uh, how it goes. And I've got one classic team where we're managing to sling out a wee double midfielder, Christie and Herrera in the Syrian attack, and Hamari Traore in defence with your boy David Soria in goals. Now, I did go in-season champ. I might change that um, because I was waiting to see I was waiting to see Sociedad like, training pictures and stuff like that. I suppose they'll be out there now. So let me check if we know, because I don't know what the deal is with Kubo, if he's going to be playing or not. And 60% uh, now, he was 50%. So I think I might slide Kubo in here. He did, uh, did have a wee day off yesterday and stuff. 13% kicker on him. Probably going to yeah, probably keep Captain Goretzka. Quatra, Quatra on to play. I don't think he is, is he? Maybe I maybe just do bin this out of being in season now and maybe go out of season because I've got Guardiola nailed to play in defence. And uh, who was it? Oh, yeah, Fiorentina. I think we looked at Fiorentina already. How do I not remember? Yeah, Quatra 60%. Maybe we'll just keep him there. Let me know what you think. Kalmak and Yang, just catching up. Club name is who got the assist. Beautiful trade. Excellent. So we can send the doggy over. Udoggy. Now, I think someone else did try and donate a card to the show today. So I'll try and get that sorted as well. But I do need to get teams organised first and foremost. I just need to put my six digits in. 
and then we'll get that Udogi sent over. Thanks again to everyone that has supported the channel, the show. We have a premiere on the channel when the deadline show finishes in 20 minutes. The live Surayar 7s podcast is up and ready to go, and it will be premiering as soon as we finish here. So the deadline show isn't quite enough action for you on the 23001 channel. Then uh, I've got a text from McBride as well, just making sure I get all the intel. And the missed call. Thanks very much, mate. Um, <laughs> And yeah, so everyone's trying to keep me up to speed. I really appreciate that. And thanks again to Ricky Lomas for the competition entry and obviously the successful victory at the end. Yeah, I think I'm probably just going to delete this. I'll come back to it in a minute because I just do think that striker and the defence is a wee bit shaky and we can maybe go classic. So the contender section is really where the headaches begin. There's no scales, so we're deleting this now. This team's still my number one team. That's fine. I don't need to change or alter that any. The underdog team... Yeah, maybe McGregor can come in for a water now, so we can delete that. And I maybe have the potential to go in-season. So if I did go in-season, I would be playing probably Marshall. No, maybe the Siege. And then we've got in-season Celtic yeah. Cardiff. I you think go. you need to look at someone in the chat. Abracadabra says Goretta could be out something in the press conference. Prediction shows Ooh. Lima. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Liga Insider, whoever they are. I could play that in season team. Yang and Rocky in, Rio and O'Reilly in midfield. That wins something, doesn't it? If they all play. But it's then if Rocky doesn't play, it's screwed if it's right, Welsh. Yeah. I think it will be Rocky because I think he's a lefty. It makes me tempted to go for that. So let's slide that in and have a look at the prize pool for a moment. I'm going to be on full fire, guys, all the way to the end of this deadline. Sorry. 120 spots for 25 quid. And what do we have? Do I have a better division than that for in season? No, I think that's the highest division I can play is Division 3. And then Classic. Where do we need to get to for it to be? Yeah, kind of in the top 20 or so. Interesting. Hmm. There's 2,000 players playing that then, it just showed, I think, which is mental. Oh, in the in season? No, the, um, in the Classic. Uh, the one, yeah, the Classic ones. Interesting. So I could play that, and it could boss out, and then that would. So what would that leave then for this team to look like? We would have Marshall and goals. We're using CCV defender. That's fine. Uh, hmm. We're using McGregor mid. We've got a real mid, don't we? Yeah, we can use real mid. I've got Heber, who we know is going to play. I think as much as Chinese, but then we've got the McGregor play. Hmm. We've got Lennon Miller, who's fifty-fifty. We could play Kyogo for double attack, but again, he does maybe got some potential to play this game which makes me a wee bit nervous on Kyogo just with the the derby heroics from last week I think team three would look something like this probably captain Itate hmm so this in season team if I went out if I went classic I probably don't have a, a, a yeah I, I'm going to do that that's what I'm going to run I'm going to run one in season and two classics for this now yeah, I'm content enough with that. Do we have Ao Tanaka back in town? So I'd probably play Ao Tanaka over McGregor just because of, like, maybe, maybe you know, just that wee bit of ambiguity and all the rest of it. Away from home, Fortuna. Do we have Ao back in town? No, we don't. So no, ignore that idea for a minute. No. That's fine. Cool. All start, I had this lineup going, Harry. What do you think of that? A bit of a New York and Red Bull hybrid on-the-go mm. collection style. Good fixtures, good games, and all the rest of it. I might break this up now, but... It's only the goalkeeper that I worry about. But yeah, the, the outfield is a wicked. 240s are probably set. I don't think I'm changing these too much. Or maybe I will. I'm not too sure. So, right, okay. We've got 15 minutes to the deadline. I think in season... Oh, uh, yeah, so Goretzka we're now worried about all of a sudden. So let's go and... Uh, yeah, let's see if I can find anything. Let's go and... Oh, Jesus, man. Goretzka, Bayern. Twitter search this bad boy, see what we get. Latest. Pavlovich, I don't know, what the hell is this? Bayern team for next season. You're just ruining my timeline. Mm, I can't see saying? much. We put it in to show. Is this 
Can you see? Nope. Let me know where you've seen that, guys, because I don't know if Play Sharper will have that updated so quickly, will they? Mm, maybe, but. Last updated 10 to 12. Mm. No, I guess not. Lang is nowhere near that, is he? Yeah. I think it is gets solid. The guy said Liga Insider. I don't know how where we get. Let's is check that like out. A... It's probably a site. Liga Insider. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They haven't tweeted anything for 21 hours or four hours, so. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know how that works. A uh, kicker, Bayern. Is what I'm going to put in now. See what they've said. Oh, I've not got this on screen. Sorry, guys. You can enjoy the sweat with me here. Uh, what's happening here? Two show and injury problems. I somehow don't stop. Sani will miss the match. Mazzari and Guerrero could start. Fed has just texted me saying he wouldn't play Goretzka in, in a priority lineup right now. Oh, he wouldn't. Thank you very much. And that's Is that because of the risk of rotation? I'll ask now. So that's a pain in the ass for me. So what does that mean? I mean, I need another end season into this team. Do you know what I would do? I would I would swap Mandanda and Alias Garcia for Goretzka and Skorupski, personally. Yeah, that's a swap, isn't it? Goalkeeper in mid. Yeah. Feder says it's not injury, it's rotation. Yeah, so we do this. Probably Captain Alias, but I don't actually think he's going to... He's going to do he good. Well. But, but does he break 80? I think, I think he could get a cheeky little corner assist or something. I mean, yes, he's the yeah. only one in that. It's him or Ori Azabel, so. I know Ori Azabel's not really had the form recently. So there, by the way, if you're watching, there's a mad glitch where you can't scroll back historic scores for the last day or so. It's really frustrating. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'll do that. We'll slide them over. And then, yeah, Skorupski. Oh, but I do now feel that the Tati's wasted in this team, maybe, if uh, Goretzka does kill us. We'll play him in 240 if you think he's... Like that good somehow. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, who would I want to bring into this then? Or let's see where I'd want to put Tati instead. Would I want to put Tati in this card winning team? Where's my 240? What does that look like again? Cunha. Hmm. Right. How about if we drop Cunha out of this for Tati? Mm hmm. If we bring Tati into this, because he's really cheap. Right, yeah. But like to make yeah. that worthwhile, you need to, because you've got 28 points now, haven't you? Mm -hmm. If I put Taylor in there, yeah, and then in midfield, I can still use McGinn, but I just don't think he's got a great game. No, Christy, Herrera, Lorente. Mm -hmm. Raquel May's on to start, but no, against former club, Harry. <sighs> yeah, that might work. I honestly, that, that might work. I mean, what are you club. going for? Are you going for the low target? Yeah. I think with, this, with the right mid, I could go mid target, but McGinn's on such form as well. <laughs> but it's just playing Thursday, Sunday against Arsenal. I don't know. Yeah, it's recipe for disaster, that one. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. It'd be tough ten, to score pretty well. A 10 minutes to the deadline. Who do I need in this midfield, Harry, to put it over the top? Is it Kelme? Is it Yang Hill? Is it Christie? Chris is still on for Bournemouth, isn't he? But Bournemouth might now be a bit weaker against Man United if they've got all these guys out. Sounds like a lot weaker, doesn't it? Oh, wow, by the way. Unal's on to start now. Another uh, bit... Alpha team of 32. That could be some bit of fun. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm stuck on the drain here. I don't know what to do. I think this is the play, but it's just who's the midfielder to slide in? I mean, McGinn might do well, you know, defensively. You know, he can he can pick up eight doubles and triples and whatever. Like, I'm not saying he doesn't nest. Like, they could score. Like, they could definitely score and he could be involved. Like, let's be honest, he's probably the best bet there, even though it's like nobody stands out. I th and I think just because he fits quite nicely, it might be a nice, nice little one. 
I'm going to stick with the low target just in case. No, no, I'm going to go mid. Screw it. I'm going mid this weekend because I think, yeah, screw it. I know I said I would never do it again, but I'm doing it this week. I'm going for it because I think, <laughs> I think Taylor and Rio, really powerful defence cards. If Tati can smash, and I'm kind of halfway there, I think. Okay. How many minutes to the deadline? Guys, I am fucking panicking here You're now. Nine minutes. You've got time. You've got time. Um, because I have a 220 rare to build. I maybe mess about with this because Contender's now set for two classic and one in season, which is fine. But the champ effort, again, we're happy with the reshuffle at the top here for, uh, we've still got a team to fix here. So the card winner, oh, that maybe go double classic now rather than double in season. And then I don't need to worry about Goretzka. So let's try double classic and see how it ends up when season cards and all the rest of it. So we'd go Skorupski in defence. We do have Kuto on to start now. We do have Ayer. We have Angelino. I like Angelino and Ayer. So let's put Angelino in because he's a bit peaky. We then, do we then take the Goretzka risk or do we just dingy that and slide in Raquel May? Mm. Mm. It's a tough one. I'm going to slide in Raquel, mate. I'm going to listen to Feda's words kind of stay with me here. We still have Fed is, Werner. Fed has moved his Bayern boys like into non-priority lineup, so and he he's the boy, so we'll trust Fed up. Yeah. I will right, trust Fed Because Because if basically if Kimmich moves up to six, then it's like Lima, Pavlovich. Are definitely going to get minutes, and then Goretzka has to fit in there somewhere as well. So, what was I about to check there? Oh yeah, Cunha. I just wanted to double check. He's like nailed. So maybe I go double striker in that kind of game. Who do Wolves have there? Wait, Forest. Good fixture, those. Yeah. So who's the best fifth man? I could play uh, John Churches to get it into in season without Goretzka. Uh, I w I wouldn't play play the best team you can possibly play whether that's in season or out yeah i think so you can't just fit in somebody for the sake of it Ayer, at home a chef you or cunha away to forest is where i'm at i would do cunha and Ayer personally i would dingy angelino really away to udinese i don't know i like does he million percent start are we saying he's like nailed I think so, yeah. It's hard to imagine the guy couldn't play at the weekend because he was injured playing 90 minutes on Thursday night. Fair. I've got it on screen here. Yeah, 70%. 17. Okay, okay. Angelino and Cunha Iyer? for me. Angelino and Cunha. I think Cunha has a higher peak than than I am personally. I know it's a good yeah. fixture, but like Cunha's a very good player. Very and good. Angelino, Kuto, Ayer. Ayer could be all right, eh? like I was saying, but I'm just worried because these are decisive goals. You know, there's a goal in this yeah. one for 77. The 88 has got a decisive in it. He's only so going just... to score well if he scores a goal, basically. Yeah, or, or a last man tag. Who has or more of a chance of scoring a goal, Cunha or Ayer? Basically, Cunha, right? You'd like to think. Yeah. I think Cunha is probably my captain pick here as well because I just think when he's yeah, been on I it, his eight is phenomenal. So, yeah, okay, cool. We'll go with that. I agree with got this card winner team here isn't changing. Hamari, Yanghill, Christy, but now can we maybe revisit him quickly? Jesus, man, six minutes to the deadline. We've got Goretzka. We'll probably still shelf him. Keep Christy in, I think, don't we? Anyone else jumping out? Ah, you're over Christy. I'd maybe do that. Mm. I don't know if that's really winning anything, is it? Unal? I don't think so. No. Christy over both of them. Yeah, I think so too. Maybe I don't captain him now, but cause I just don't know. I know I've got to keep captain him. I like Unal. So I don't think there's any worse chance of scoring. Okay, cool. That seems kind of set, but we do need a rare team. So I'm going to dingy in season and maybe go classic. We'll go chasing some boxes. Division two is the best box we can chase. We've got all black and goals. I want to use Guardiola, but do we have someone else? Mm, no, we could use Angelino again, but I'm or Robo. But yeah, I do Robo like. Robo or Guardiola? What do we think? Robo. Really? Yeah. All day long. Home to Palace. Yeah, home Guardi to Luton. Yeah, but nah. Guardiola's like hasn't been. I know he scored a really good goal midweek, but oh, sugar. Surely Robo on sets like it's a no-brainer Eight that one. Eighty-six against Arsenal. Fifty-one yeah, AA. That's Arsenal. Arsenal. Like yeah. It's Robo all day. Sorry. 
with the set, like if you didn't have set pieces, I'd probably say I say it's a, t- a toy cost. Uh, I said it again. <laughs> toy <laughs> fucking cost. Let's do a mind in those. Let's okay, let's stick with Robo then. Let's stick with Robo. <laughs> um, works. Good. Do we think works plays? I've got Pareo. I've got Haidara. Vert Pareo. Yeah. Vert Parejo, Ferran yeah, Torres, Zacharian. Yeah, nah, gotta get Vert. Zaki's get, Zaki's get the fixture. Get Wurtz in, we think. Okay, I'll go with that yeah. for sure. But I think Zaki gets into this team. In attack, I wanted Tati if I'm going to be, because I don't trust Taki, don't trust the Abbey. Yeah, let's get, get Tati, Tati in here. Taking him out on our team, but so we need to fix that in a second. And then Parejo away to Bilbao for the fifth man. Amadou at home to Wolfsburg. And who's the other one I liked? I liked somebody else down here. Zaki. Oh, I'm taking Zaki. I think Zaki's the man. Where are you, Zach? Or Torres? Let's put Zach in there. Captain. I'm going to go with Tati because I just think he's going to kill it. Awesome. All right, cool. Now we've got an all-star team to fix. Oh, my God, guys. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> Everyone's telling me that they're, they're having heart palpitations. Um, Watching this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah, so I, used to it. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, Abada I'm or Kyogo? Oh, Abada or Kyogo? I like Abada for a, a cap two twenty, but he's new to start. A home yeah, of Toronto. Yeah, I'm gonna, they'll, they'll steamroll him. Uh, mm, you think so? You've got AA as well, haven't you, with him, where Kyogo is going to be a... Uh, Do you have okay. any of them? Yeah, come on. I mean, he hasn't played, but he's a winger. Of course he's going to have AA over over a, a forward that has like 10 BCMs every game. Okay, let's go about that. Captain Forsberg, we'll keep that the same. And then, awesome, we're into cap modes again. So let's see, what do we have left over? I still got training to do, fuck. <laughs> Shit, guys, guys, guys. Oh. Get training done. You, you, your teams are fine. Oh, right, okay. Who's my defender? Angelino on a 36. Midfield, I would definitely want Ferran in here on I a 40. I how many people are watching this. <laughs> Where is Ferran? I can't even stop to check. Ferran, an attack, and then... How many points do we have remaining? 91. So I can't really squeeze anyone too exciting in here. So I think Kyogo takes his spot here on the 44. And then we've got 47 points remaining. Affordable only rares, please. Lennon Miller, Conrad Limer, we think starts now, don't we? Yeah, probably. So I think it's Limer. Limer or Miller. I'm going to go Limer just because that's what we've done. Captain Ferran. One minute to the deadline, guys. I think it is just run for training teams now. So I think I've got everything in. That will quickly show itself in training if we've got playing goalkeepers we've not selected. Uh, Tani is probably suspended, so I don't need to worry about that. All right, okay, quickly. Who do we want training? Mickey? Uh, Danny P? Oh, Jesus, guys, one minute. Can we get one training team in? Kubo, why not? Yeah, you will, you will. You'll get him. Uh, get him. Get Goretzka, Goretzka, sure. Hey, I'll try and get another one in. <laughs> I think you got time. Get a couple in. Uh, oh, Kuto not playing this week, sadly for him. In midfield, I see Rainier, Saganikov, uh, and then I seen somebody else down here. Ayer. Nice. I've, I've got a feeling I'm missing a team. I've got a feeling I'm missing a team somewhere. By the way, <laughs> I'm going to do two. Twi- I'm going to do two. Tw- oh no, we're at deadline. We're at deadline. Can I get two twenty super rare out? Nah, it's it's three o'clock. Oh no, oh no, oh no. No, midfielders, no! <laughs> guys, no! Oh, think of all the XP I've missed out that on, guys. was the best deadline stream we've ever had. Oh, fuck, I've got, <laughs> oh, I've got a feeling I've messed something up. Oh, I've got a feeling I've messed something up. Honestly, I think you're fine. I, I do. So, Oh, I've just got a feeling, man. Just got a feeling. But yeah, they look fine. They look fine enough, don't they? Oh, they look fine enough. Cool. Buzzing, guys. We're locked in. Harry Boy, it's been an absolute pleasure, as it always is. 
Yeah, we just about got there, I think. Uh, sadly, only two training teams at FC Barcelona. And the press conference this week is going to be... Uh, <laughs> we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be bemoaning the coaching staff and all the organisation pre, pre-game week. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys, for all, the, for all the love and support there. We've got hundreds of likes. At Harry, you're right. It has been the biggest deadline show. We've got 131 likes. Thanks to everyone. Good luck to everyone this game week. The only thing to say, Harry boy, is good luck. We hope none of you get DNPs. Everyone that's secured their likes is going to... Is going to get that good RNG. And as soon as we finish the stream, guys, we've got the premiere of the Surrey Sevens podcast. Harry, it has been an absolute whirlwind and a pleasure, mate. Good luck this game week to you. Thank you, mate. All the best to yourself as well. And uh, yeah, everyone in the chat as well. All the best, lads. And we'll see you next week. Take care.